been covering here for a while? Yeah. Oh, good, good. Good evening, everybody. This is a meeting of the Board of Selectmen, September 10th, 2013. Selectman Mitchell, would you like to lead the board into the Pledge of Allegiance? Mm -hmm. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I would like everybody to remain standing. I'd like to have a moment of uh, silence for Peter Bodkin. He's devoted many hours of service to our community, serving on the Board of Appeals, Council on Aging, and many other uh, <coughs> boards and committees in town. Thank you. Thank you. We have no invited guests. We have no invited guests tonight. Uh, we have do have the approval of the minutes of the August twentieth, two thousand thirteen. Chairman, I make a motion to approve the minutes of August twentieth, subject to any changes or corrections by the board. Does any board members have any corrections? No. If not, that is seconded by the chair. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Ayes have a five to zero. Okay. Next, we have correspondence. <coughs> First on the agenda is the Knights of Columbus, uh, October 11th and 14th, 2013, the Knights of Columbus weekend in Saugus. The Columbus Day weekend coincides with our annual Tootsie Roll Drive, which, as you know, benefits the children with emotional and developmental problems. And uh, the board does approve this uh, request every year. So do I have a motion? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Selectman Panetta makes a motion that we approve the canning uh, for the Knights of Columbus. Seconded by the chair. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Ayes have a five to zero. Next under correspondence is the Saugus Lions Club. They're requesting permission to operate their annual canning drive on Saturday, September 21st, 2013. They'll be operating the fundraiser canning drive for donations to the Massachusetts Eye Research from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. And they'll be located at the Saugus Center Rotary in the Linfels Parkway uh, at Village Park at the Lights, uh, and they do do this every year for the uh, Mass Eye and Air Research. So do I have a motion to approve So moved, Mr. Canning. Chairman. Selectman Holick makes a motion to approve the canning for the Saugus Lions Clubs. Seconded by the Chair. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. I have a five to zero. Uh, next, the Saugus Rotary Club. They're looking for a banner request for Main Street. Uh, starting around September 8th until September 30th. I believe, Wendy, those are the only, the Heath uh, Rotary Club's the only one that usually requests for a September according to the list we have. So do I have a motion to approve that request? So moved. Mr. Chairman. Selectman Castanetti makes a motion to re approve the banner request for the Sa Saugus Rotary Club from September 8th to September 30th. Seconded by the Chair. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Ayes have a five to zero. Next, we do have a letter from Mr. Cleary regarding the new charter school on, that is supposed to be located on Main Street. Is Mr. Cleary here? Hi. Want to come on, come on up to the podium, give your name and address? <clears throat> Hi, how are you? Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Bob Cleary. I live at 92 Main Street, which is directly across the street from where the proposed charter school is supposed to be built, at least from what I've read. Um, I have some serious concerns, as I outlined in my letter, about the impact that building uh, a school that's going to house 360 students is going to have on uh, the traffic on Main Street, the um, amount of noise in the area, the effect on the neighborhood, but largely um, the traffic impact it's going to have. Um, with 360 students, many of whom are going to be coming from out of Saugus. They're going to be looking for students from Peabody, Danvers, uh, Lynn, Salem, among other towns. Um, adding that amount of traffic every morning during rush hour on Main Street, right next to the Vine Street light, um, would be horrendous. Um, also, I have concerns about how that would be the school would be accessed. Um, that's a cliff directly uh, where they're going to be proposing to build it. 
um, how that much traffic is going to be able to access the school, what kind of egress there's going to be, what kind of effect there will be to uh, water runoff if, uh, that, if the topography has changed on that hill. Um, I, just, I have a lot of concerns uh, about the, that proposed building. Um, so I just wanted to broach that. And I, it's my understanding that uh, the, the Board of Selectmen does, um, does handle traffic concerns. So that was my major uh, request of the, the board to uh, consider that at least to have a traffic study or something done before any kind of uh, building is allowed to be done there. I certainly agree with you wholeheartedly. Uh, that would be a, a terrible uh, uh, intersection over there at Vine and Main Street. I know uh, I had heard that the church was, was not going to move in at one point. I heard Greater Grace Ministry had backed out on leasing them the property or selling them the property. And that was the last I heard. Mr. Manager, do you know anything about that? Have you heard anything about that? Um, the only thing that I know that uh, they were they were going to submit some plans through the building uh, department and go through that, pro you know, the, pro the permitting process and whatnot. But uh, I can, you know, find out and get an update on that. I'd appreciate it. And get back to the board, and then we can uh, inform Mr. Cleary of what is yeah. going on there. Select so McCaston. Yeah, I, I spoke with the building inspector about <coughs> a week or so ago, and I certainly share your concern because I, I don't know how that intersection will possibly handle the amount of traffic filing in and out of that one one lane driveway in and out not to mention the light at Vine Street and I think it's a terrible location for it I've spoken to the building inspector and I think we need to uh, talk to uh, get Sergeant Van Steensburg up here and talk about a traffic study and maybe get town council involved and see what our abilities are to oh, restrict geez. the to restrict it from going in whether we have any or not I'm not sure but I, I certainly share your concern I haven't spoken with you but I have had a couple of your neighbors call me, and they're all in a panic right now about what's going to happen at that location. And okay. In my opinion, it doesn't go there. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Selectman Mitchell. Selectman Castanetti. Um, if anyone's driven that road going to the high school in the morning, it's, it's awful. And that's the high school, and then you're going to add another school. <clears throat> it just, I think it would be a bad idea. Yeah, I agree. Select Mr. Chairman, Panetta. I coupled along with that, we have the Belmonte there too. I mean, the, the traffic from the Belmonte, the high school, and our charter school, it's going to make it very difficult for the residents. I understand. Mr. Chairman. Selectman Hallett. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I talked to a couple of neighbors down there, but when this came out a month ago, my first phone call was to the police chief, and I had an in-depth conversation with him for about 15 minutes, and his <laughs> concerns were the same, is that you have you know, over 200 children, now, no matter how many cars are coming twice a day, you have that light there, and that's one of the worst intersections that I have seen myself of people running the red light. Anybody that's been on Vine Street to take a left, the light turns green. One, two, sometimes three cars will go through that 30, 40 plus, going through that either coming either direction. So the chief said that he was going to look into it because he was concerned because it's going to uh, basically in, in, uh, entail manpower, and it's also going to uh, possibly increase traffic someplace else because you're going to have to shut that down while these cars come and go, and it's on Main Street, which is the main area, to get over to Route 1 to cross to get to the Fellsway and to get to Route 1 north and south from, from basically about half the town. So he was concerned about it, and he was going to look into it, and he was going to see what he could do as far as, as, far as for getting any details for us too back to us. So, so uh, we, we, you know, we understand, and I understand, because like I said, that is one of the worst intersections you could think of to try to channel cars out of twice a day. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mr. Manager, so I would appreciate that. If you can get back to the board regarding what options the board, board has over that uh, charter school or the police department, building inspector, or any other boards or commissions, what control the town basically can have over that project. I'd appreciate it. Okay. Okay, thank you, Mr. Thank Clary. You. We appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. <clears throat> Okay, the Saugus Police Department correspondence number five has a new uh, town bylaw regarding special police officers. I don't know if Sergeant Van Steensburg wanted to say a few words on this. Uh, they're just looking to insert it into the special town meeting warrant. So do I have a motion for that? So move, Mr. Chair. Selectman Panetta makes a motion to insert the uh, article from the police dep department regarding the uh, special police officer town by law seconded by the chair all those in favor aye, aye. opposed abstain ayes have a five to zero 
Next, we did receive a correspondence from the MBTA Advisory Board regarding the elections. Uh, nomination papers are due September 27, 2013. And this is the elections for the Boston Regional Metropolitan Planning Organization. And uh, the elections will be held in October, and I'm sure that the board will receive something right after the nomination deadline is September 27th, and then at that time, we'll, we'll vote on uh, our choice. Okay, just refer that to the file right now. And that is it for correspondence. Citizens' comment period. First on the agenda was Mr. Kramich. See here? Hi, how are you? Yeah, Bill Kramer, 12 Emory Street, Saugus. Yeah. And why I'm here is about the Belmonte. I heard that we want to put a plaque up there. And I feel that with the amount of money that the schools need now, between the lunch program and the condition that we're in, I don't think we should waste money. If you want to put a plaque up there, you could put a small plaque thanking the citizens of Saugus and the taxpayers because they're the ones that are paying this $19 million. So that's where I stand on that one. Thank you. The second one down, it's just the open meeting law. i just like to know how we're doing with the uh, person from the Attorney General's office, if uh, they are going to come, or if you've heard anything about it. Uh, yes, so the, the, uh, I talked to the town clerk had, had uh, contacted me the day after the, our last meeting and said she might be able to schedule a meeting with the uh, AG's office, Some have someone come out regarding the open meeting law because they recently had a meeting regarding the campaign finance laws. But they told her they don't go to individual cities and towns, they have regional meetings. So if anybody's interested, they do have one just in Danvers coming up in October. I have the date. Somewhere. Wendy, do you remember the date in October? No. <clears throat> Let me see if I can find it, Bill. I had it. Nope. No, I'll let you know. I I'll make an announcement at our next no. meeting. It's in October. Uh, if you want to, you know what I'll do, Bill? I'll have Wendy call you, yeah. leave a message Good. on your home phone. It's, it's going to be in oct October in Danvers at the North Shore Community uh, oh. Center. Okay, very good. Thanks. Okay. Okay, I wish I had it, I had it. So much paperwork. Okay. Next on the agenda, we do have a few more minutes, is uh, Mr. Garabedian regarding Bay Ring Communications. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Just if you want that data, I just pulled it up. It's, oh, great. Uh, uh, Mr. Kramage, it's uh, in Danvers, and it's Thursday, October 24th. 2013 uh, from 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, North Shore Community College, okay. which is um, located at 1 Ferncroft Road in Danvers. That's the Attorney General's office to hold regional open meeting law educational forum. And it's throughout the state, but that's the closest location for us in October. And just, just for the public again, it's at North Shore, the open, um, open meeting law is at North Shore Community College, Thursday, October 24th, between the hours of 6 and 8 p.m. Thank you, Mr. Manager. <coughs> hi, hi, Mr. Uh, Garabedian, how are you? Hi, Rich Garabedian, 846 Broadway, Saugus. Um, thank you, Honorable Chairman, Board of Selectmen, Town Manager, Wendy Reed. Thank you all. Um, I just wanted to uh, ask a few questions on the uh, Bay Ring contract where they were going to be wiring some fiber optics through Saugus. I just had a couple questions on that, if I may, through, the, sure. through you, Mike, through the town manager. Yeah. Town manager, I just, I didn't, just didn't see it. June 4th was when, you know, it, was, it went through the Board of Selectmen and unanimously approved, and I was just starting to think about the contract, and actually something that, with that many possibilities, um, you know, and, and kind of vagueness, there, there's a lot of things that really had to be thought about for the community um, before that went through, like, you know, licensing fees for them running their wires through uh, through the telephone poles and things like that. You know, annual fees that Saga should get from that. Um, other things like, um, you know, um, what, did that could you know those fees and, and that kind of situation. Where originally it said it was going to be for corporate businesses and then possibly consumers too. 
I was kind of concerned that maybe that would infringe upon the Comcast contract with Saugus affecting SCTS. So, so I guess, my, just a clarification. So yeah. You, you, are you talking about the um, them, I guess, coming here for approval to run fiber optics throughout the community, you mean? Correct. Or them doing some of the free work that they were going to do, I guess? No, the, the free work was a, was a nice little benefit, right. but I mean something like that in perpetuity is, is worth a lot more money than just $100,000 for, for a brief install. That's worth a lot more. What you're giving them is the license to become like a mini Comcast. Right. And, you know, I don't know how Comcast would feel about that, but they would probably want to split fees and everything. So it's, it, that could be, a, a, a you know, something that should be really looked into. I just thought it was... It was kind of a brief thing for something that was so significant. Like I called um, Diane Nora, she's the assistant town manager in Danvers, and they, which was one of the uh, one of the towns you said you know was passing through Peabody and Danvers, and they said they had extensive contractual agreements with them, everything from like Verizon to 50/50 things with attachment fees. So there was all kinds of licensing issues that they brought up. So I guess that um, the, because there is no uh, contract per se because the. Um, the, the polls, and maybe it's different in Danvers. I mean, you certainly can look into it, but the polls in Danvers, I, I don't know who owns the polls. Like here, um, it's one of the, the proprietary companies that owns the most of the polls. I think the town of Saugus owns about 3,000 polls. But I, it's, it's, I think it's them, it's that, that's the organization, I think, that ends up getting fees for... Well, what, what do we get from it? Just those, the uh, municipality inst installations that we're talking about? Yeah, I don't think, in other words, I don't know what right we'd have to anything. I can call Danvers and ask and find out, but Danvers may own, there may be a different arrangement where they and have jurisdiction also. over their polls. <coughs> uh, because, in other words, I think generally what happens is with uh, anybody that runs wires on the polls, whoever maintains and changes the polls out and all that, I think that's who gets some sort of a leasing fee, and that's probably an arrangement they have with well, them. Well, you don't, I don't think, but I don't, don't know think? What, I don't know what the town would be entitled to, but we can certainly look into it. They I do. mean, in the contractual, where, where, the, where the contract was accepted and passed unanimously, doesn't, I mean, hasn't there already been a contract, contract written up for this? No. It, it's not a contract. It's actually just a, um, actually, we, I think at the time. The and board I voted it. Yeah, the board voted approval for, to allow them, like, as of when Verizon comes here, or, um, I mean, a national grid and says they want to remove a poll or, or to put a poll in a different spot, they come because the, the, the selectmen have authority over that, and then they vote to uh, approve it. Well, you mean anybody then could, could just come in and run, run something through Verizon's lines and so I guess doesn't get anything for it? I don't want, to me it just seems like it's another situation where it's rule one where we don't collect anything. To me this is an opportunity just like Comcast pays us, these people should have to pay us also, <laughs> don't you think? The, yeah, we can look into it, I don't know what I mean, they're cutting legal. through our city, our town. But I, they're, you're using somebody else's polls. Well, it you was just like they, we were don't taking, the they were taking the root of the, the old fire wire, right? The what? The, the old fire wires that were strung from the, from the fire station. It just, it just seems to me we don't have any ownership, so anybody could pass through town. We can, I mean, we can take a look at it. Yeah. At other communities, take a look at Danvers, Mr. And the other thing, did we, we, you know, were there three bids that were accepted on this procedure from these people? <clears throat> I'm just asking. Uh, the board has the authority to license uh, cable companies under Chapter 166A, and there's no requirements that we have any bids. The same thing with Comcast. If we decide to bring Verizon in, there's no bidding process. The, yeah. board, the board has sole authority. Well, over we, there. we can certainly look into it, but yeah, I, I, we'll I, I, it. My, my guess is yeah. on it right now is that I, Danvers or whatever community you're talking about, probably different, are not similarly situated in the sense of, I mean, it's so, sort of like telecommunications. You put up a cell tower, um, they come through Saugus. If they're on private property, we don't, you know, there's no residuals for the town, mm -hmm. I mean, because of the polls. But, I mean, it's something to look into. I, I don't, there's not even, there's no, we, they're not contracted with the town. They just went and asked for approval because they probably, I would assume, have a contract with whoever owns the polls well, it to seems use to their me polls it's just, in space. If it's utilizing, you know, our space, there should be some remuneration for the town, that's all. Mm. Yeah, we'll we'll take a look at it. Thank you, Rich. Thank you. Mr. 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 Chairman, through you to the town manager. Uh, it would be the same as Verizon's. People have DSL. We don't collect any money off of DSL. Be, uh, and there's other companies that also provide Internet service also, too, similar to that in, in, in other communities. Uh, Comcast is a user fee at the, at the end of it. And for everybody that gets cable, 
gets internet, there is a user fee. There was one time that we didn't get anything off of the internet, then we uh, were starting to get some money from some of the advertising. So uh, there's just a lot of different things out there that we don't collect off of, but people use the polls. Like there's all kinds of stuff that we have on, on our polls from different companies. And the people that own the polls set up the lease agreements, like you said, Mr. Manager, and then we get them. But it's something we can look into because if we get into anything else, they're going to have to come for a license from the town. No, I, I mean, Mr. Chairman, through you, I mean, certainly something to look into, but just thinking about, you know, the concept would be, I mean, right now we have National Grid that runs electrical wires, and you have, we don't, they're not paying us a lease. Um, we don't maintain the poles. So, in other words, it would be, they're using the poles to bring electricity through the town and charge people as well as, um, you know, telephone and whatnot, and, and there's no, nothing that they have to be contracted with the town of Saugus. So I, I would have to look to see how this is different or how the com other communities are, are situated. Well, we've been trying to give Verizons to give us cable. Then they have to come in, pay us a, pay us a fee to negotiate, <laughs> and then pay a fee on every customer that signs up for cable. But as long as they're in the phone business and, and they're doing DSL, it's not a hard wired cable for internet service or whatever's going on. We've been trying to get Verizons in here for seven years now, and Verizons doesn't want to come in and pay any money, and they don't want to sit down and they don't want to provide it. What, what can we do? We can't do anything with it. Thank you. Okay. What I'd like to do now is take up the continued public hearing, tumble in, because we do have a, a 8 o'clock public hearing you need to uh, uh, address. Do we have a motion to take from the table continued public hearing, tumble in restaurant? So moved. Excuse me. Second by the Chi Hai. I, the no, we, uh, citizens. Yeah, we're going to have to take that up later, uh, Gene, because we have some public hearings and continual well, public right. hearings we have to evening. do. Thank we'll, you. we'll get it at the end of the meeting. I'm sorry about that. Uh, Selectman Horlick makes a motion to take from the table a tumble in. Second by the chair. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Ayes have it. Is the tumble in here? Hi, how are you? The board had talked about, uh, we did approve the transfer of the common victor's license and we were talking about uh, grease trap waivers. Uh, hi, how are you? I want to give your name and address to our clerk, please. Laurie Kuna, 134 Falcon Street, East Boston, Mass. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Uh, the grease trap waiver issue, uh, that's what you're back here for. And uh, I did some research, and, and I know there's about eight businesses that still need to comply. And uh, unfortunately, it seems like every month or so that the board is dealing with these grease trap issues. I feel that it's best that we end up dealing with these all at once. So what I would suggest is to uh, send letters out by November when when do you do the uh, the renewal, license renewal, send some letters out, letting the property owners know that they might not be in compliance with the grease trap waiver, uh, set up a public hearing for any, anybody that wants to appeal or wants a waiver March 1st, and then have all the grease traps installed by November 1st. That's just right before license renewal. And if they're not, in, if they have to be installed and they're not installed before November 1st, 2014, the board has the option of not renewing their license. That's what my suggestion would be because I think we're, unfortunately, 85% of the businesses are in compliance in town. There's about 60 businesses. There's only about eight that are not in compliance right now. We did grant about 15 waivers, but mostly they're for people like Dunkin' Donuts that don't cook on the premises or there's no land under the buildings, or they're not doing any cooking, maybe a, a deli shop or something. So I think we need to really tackle the tackle issue and, and really take care of it all at once instead of trying to piecemeal it and wait for another 10 years for someone to transfer a business. Because there are a couple of businesses that have been under the same ownership before our SOAR rules and regulations came into effect in 1987. So they're kind of grandfather, but I think we need to bring, bring them into compliance, and that would be my suggestion. Mr. I don't know how the board members feel. Sure. <clears throat> how does that affect somebody like Ms. Kuna here that's uh, in the process of buying a business, <clears throat> excuse me, and it hinges on whether or not a grease trap is to be installed? I would say, no, there was 
Lincoln Ave Pizza and Subs, Tumble Inn, and 23 Essex Street have been before us for a grease trap waiver. I would say they, you know, we give them the same option that we will the other five places that are not in compliance. But is she going to buy a business <clears throat> with the threat of a twenty to forty thousand dollar bill hanging over her head? Uh, we and can wait another year can until ask, it's settled. We can ask her if, if that, that's what she wants to do. So you have an option of either coming, getting a decision from the board tonight regarding a grease trap waiver, or waiting for the board to try to get all these licenses. There's about eight more businesses that haven't complied, <clears throat> and try to address them by the first by this year, and having them the opportunity to put in a waiver March first. And then if we don't give them a waiver, at least they'll have from March 1st till next November 1st, 2014, to install a grease trap. Uh, or you can just go by a decision by the board tonight. <clears throat> you know, if you want to, what I can do is I can table this and you can sit down and make a decision. No, I, I'll Come. take the waiver tonight. tonight. Tonight, you want to go for it tonight? You, you, that doesn't mean you're getting a waiver. Do you want to vote tonight whether you yes, get a waiver please, or not? Yes. Okay. Uh, did you have any more information that you want to put? We were supposed to get something back from the Board of Health, Wendy. We didn't get anything back, did we? Because they were supposed to get back to the Board, the board of Health and the Plumbing Inspector on whether an external grease trap can be located at your property. And I haven't heard anything, so I would probably just put it off till the 24th until we get a report back from them. Wendy, can you contact the Board of Health and Plumbing Inspector? That's what the board wants to do. Mr. Chairman, can I ask a question through you to M Selectman Castanetti, please? Sure. You said twenty to $40,000. I just want you to know, I called some service and pump companies to find out <clears throat> how much it would cost. For example, Burger King has a 1,000-gallon tank. Fud Ruckus has a 1,500-gallon tank. I mean, some of the bigger restaurants, like Kowloon, might be bigger. And I asked how much it would cost. They said between three and five thousand dollars, and that includes the asphalt. Where did you get the number of twenty to forty thousand? I'm, I'm just trying I to spoke, put my arms around. I spoke with our plumbing inspector yesterday, and he said twenty to forty thousand. Pretty much what it costs to install an external grease trap with construction, digging up the street and repaving and work. And theirs especially is behind. Would have to be behind the building, and it's. A, a quite a distance before they can tie into the main. So there's, I think this will be on the upper end of that estimate, 20 to 40,000. And again, I was with the plumbing inspector yesterday specifically talking about that. No, because I don't wait, I've never heard three to 5,000, even when Giovanni's came in front of us up on uh, Walnut Plaza. I, I've never heard 20 to 40,000 either, so. Yeah, I, I, I spoke with a building uh, plumbing inspector yesterday. He told me around 15 to 25. Well, that's still 20 to 40, depending on on, on the layout of the property, too. Yeah, I, I still feel strongly, like I did when we had Hometown Pizza and when we had Lincoln Ave, that, you know, our t taxpayers have spent over $20 million cleaning up the sore to have clean water so we're not dumping raw sewage into the Osagas River. Well, the, and, the, go ahead. Go I'm ahead. sorry. Go ahead. No, that's okay. And, I mean, I don't want the tax burden anymore to be on our taxpayers. I mean, the property owners and the applicant, I, I believe, because I used to own a restaurant. I, they, you need to work together, the property owner as well as the person who is either renting or purchasing the property to try to alleviate whatever that is to come in compliance, whatever the rules and the regulations are. I mean, ultimately, your property will be worth more money because you will have this external grease trap. I mean, so it's, it's good for the town, and eventually it will be good for you. I mean, maybe there's something that could be worked out between... The, the seller and, and you, of course, the buyer. One of the other things a plumbing inspector mentioned yesterday was the fact that the restaurants aren't the problem. It's the residences. Because people at home that cook don't have grease traps, internal or external. And all the grease that they, that they have, that they cook with, that they wash their pans and dishes with, goes right down the drain. He said that the majority of the grease getting into the system is not from the restaurants. So I think that's something that has to be taken into consideration, as well as the fact that we need to start looking at some alternatives, because if that's going to be the cost of installing a grease trap system for a restaurant, we potentially are going to be putting several of these small businesses out of business 
and I know the tumble has been there since I was just a little kid. I hate to see it closed because we put that type of a burden on them. And there's got to be other options with today's technology. Uh, so does the board want to, we'll have to continue this hearing until the 24th until we, uh, until we get a, uh, something back from the Board of Health and Plumbing Inspector, if one can be installed at that location. Because that, that's what we get asked. Mr. Chairman, can I have a comment? And then, and then I can put on the agenda, I give the board time to think of uh, whether they wanted to adopt that policy, bringing the rest of the people in for non-compliance and trying to deal with this all at once instead of piecemealing it. Can I have the floor? Thank you. <clears throat> um, my concern is, is that we met in the past and down in the Bristol Street area and Peveril Drive, there was a lot of grease backups down in that area. And it was coming from, uh, most of it was coming down Lincoln Ave that was coming down to, through Bristol Street and then there was a lot of clogs down on Peveril Drive. <clears throat> About eight years ago on Central Street near Lily Pond Ave, there was a backup in someone's house and it was from the street back onto their property about five feet and it was grease and the lady's house was being pumped out but the clog was caused by grease and it was coming in from the street and to her line and stopping halfway up her property and stopping her sewage from going out. I know on Route 1 eight years ago when we were seeing pictures up on Route 1 and 80% of the grease up there on Route 1 getting into the systems is from Route 1 and there was clogs up there and we just met with CDM again. There was clogs up there that were three, four, five feet long and up to 20 inches round. There was pipes up there 20 inches across that were clogged almost two thirds of the way because of grease that was getting into the system. So I, there has to be a mechanism in, in order to, to try to alleviate this. Uh, and the, the burden is on the property owner to make the property better which means that later on when you go to sell a business, everything is in, in, in compliance. But if it's gonna be up on the upper end of the scale, I know that there may be something that this board might be able to, to do to try to come up with a mechanism uh, to, to try to help these businesses out, uh, you know, by, by uh, you know, giving them the additional time, or there may be a mechanism uh, that we, we might be able to actually help them out financially also too, to, to try to do something, because we do have sewer money, and there are upgrades that we can do from the street in, up to the property line, so that might also help too. There might be something we can be able to, to work out here. But Greece has to stop out of the system. It has to stop and there's only a few other places left, but the grease has to stop out of this system because we're spending $27 million and everybody's paying for this. Every business, every homeowner is paying to have the sewer done over and every line that they're pulling out has got grease in it and it's got all kinds of other uh, inflow and in, in, infiltration and it has to be fixed. And that's why we're spending this money to try to fix this problem. Okay. Uh -huh. So does the board want to continue this until I get an opinion from the Board of Health and Plumbing Inspector whether an external can be installed at that location for the 24th? Are you going to get an opinion on whether an external can be installed there? Yes, they, they were supposed to get back to us. Yeah, I'm fine with the with with uh, continuance. Okay. September 24th meeting okay, I, on this one. Just one last thing. I, I just want to make sure that whatever we do, we're consistent. I mean, because we voted unanimously for Lincoln Ave for an uh, external grease trap, and we just had Hometown Pizza here. Right. We voted unanimously, and now we have Tumble Inn. It has to be the same for all, unless, unless there's extraordinary circumstances. And well, I think that we have to take those, those circumstances into effect. Like Hometown Pizza, you brought Hometown Pizza up. They have no dishes. They use pla paper plates, plastic utensils, so there's no washing of, of things that, that would generate grease. That they they sell their they sell their grease from inside the restaurant. They're certainly not the type of you can't compare them to somebody that does does all fried foods and has plates and, and silverware because it's, they're not the same. So consistency is fine to a point, but you have to take into consideration the uniqueness of each business. I think before we vote on them. All right, and I think we try to do that. Okay. Uh, Wendy, can you get a letter out to the Board of Health and Plumbing Inspector and say I need a recommendation regarding the tumble in whether an external can be installed in the, over there? Uh, so, I, and do the board members want me to put a proposal together regarding the other 
I think five or six establishments that aren't tied in? Do they want to get Put them to comply? Hold them together? Yeah, I, to get them to comply, give them a year to install an external grease trap or not. I think that's a good idea. I, th I, think, we, I think we need to. Okay. So Mr. I'll, I'll Mr. Chairman, for the next meeting. Yeah, for Mr. September Chairman, 24. I would just one other comment too. Uh, we had somebody come before us and we waived the grease trap because they pulled the fryer laters out. There was a business that said, I'm taking the two fryer laters out, and they were using paper plates, and they, weren't, they were just baking <coughs> bread. That's like with some of these other places that they don't do fry food, and they don't have plates, dishes, silverware. But when you have a small place, and then you have plates, silverware, and dishes, that, that could be the same capacity of grease as somebody that has twice as many seats that doesn't use paper plates or, or, or dishes or, or you know anything that's gonna be washed or rinsed. So like you said, you gotta take into consideration, but the main point is at the end of the day is you know we, we have to do what we have to do to be consistent is to making sure that grease is staying out of the system. It's the number one problem that we have. Remember up on Route 1 by Bob's store, that whole line up there because of every business that was on that side, we spent hundreds and thousands of dollars to replace that pipe because oh, because when we started the I and I program over 30 years of stuff that made it by some of the external grease traps or the internal ones, that cement line pipe had 30 years of just junk flowing through it, and we had to repair that. Then we had to go. Then we found that we had to go across the highway to the other side of the highway and put another line in that was all torn up because of grease and stuff that was put down there also too to try to remove the grease. So that whole project I think was up in the between four to five hundred thousand dollars that we spent because of thirty years of just everybody just, you know, did what they wanted to do until we had the ACO come in and then we had to rebuild the line. So I think we're all on the same yep. page. I mean I think we all want to make sure that we can keep as much grease out of the system as yep. possible. But when the plumbing inspector made the comment to me yesterday about the problem is with the residences, not with the businesses, that kind of opened up a door that I hadn't even thought about before. But there is no restriction from homes, and there's a lot more homes than there are restaurants and so on. I'm sure we'll all be discussing this in depth at the September <laughs> 24th meeting, right? Mr. Chairman, uh, do I have a motion? Can, oh, can I just ask a question? Mitchell. We continued this from the last meeting, and, and we don't have everything we need. Do they have to wait till the next meeting? The 24th, yes. We couldn't do it sooner. No. By the time you advertise and. Okay. It's only a week, really, week and a half. Okay. Uh, do we have a motion to continue then <clears throat> this till the 24th? So moved. Selectman Horlick makes a motion to continue this meeting till the 24th, seconded by the chair. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Ayes have a five to zero. We'll, we'll have something in writing from the plumbing and our Board of Health regarding the external trap. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and I will have something, a proposal for the board with a list of the establishments that haven't complied yet. I think we need to, there's some pretty big restaurants on that list. I think we need to bring them into compliance. Like, like Selectman Panetta said, we're spending $27 million. The residents are paying for that, so uh, I think we need to bring them in. Okay, let's see. The first public hearing, 8 o'clock public hearing. <clears throat> okay, notice is hereby given that the Saugus Board of Selectmen will conduct a public hearing on the application of Aggregate Industries 1831 Broadway to extend the Special S2 permit to allow the removal of earth and rock and to allow the operation of a quarry at Rear Broadway and Whittier Ave. Assessors Plan 2030. Lot A61 and assesses plan 2031, lot A122 for a period of six months. The hearing will be held in the Saugus Town Hall Auditorium, 298 Central Street on September 10th, 2013 at 8 p.m. Is the applicant or his or her representative here? Yes, uh, Mr. Hi, Chairman, you, members of the board, for the record, Attorney Richard Magnin with an office at 194 Central Street, Saugus, representing Aggregate Industries. With me here this evening is Eric Mueller, the general manager of Aggregate Stone Division. Scott Colby, who's usually here, is on vacation. Uh, an updated plan was submitted with this application for an extension, as you are well familiar, of the six months extension for the S2 permit. Uh, there has been no blasting in the prior six months. Uh, the applicant is fully paid up in advance for the permit, as is required. 
uh, fences are inspected monthly as is required. The, uh, all the department comments that came back in relation to this application indicate no objection. And the basic situation is uh, nothing has happened since the, the last extension of the permit. And we would uh, defer to any questions from the board. Just, I'm, I'm sorry I didn't hear you, Rich. Was, was there any blasting during no. this? No. No, okay. It's been quiet over there for a number of years. No. Yeah, they, they may have one blast before the end of the year, a small one for theoretically uh, per, uh, uh, persevering uh, in terms of the grandfathered status of, of, of the, the blasting, but it's, it's more a token type of thing. Okay. That really might happen, but it might not. Are there any questions from board members? Uh, Mr. Chairman. Selectman Horwitz. I know this has come up several years ago when everybody was concerned. The uh, fence, they still go out once a week. Monthly, and it's in monthly good inspections. Once a month, and it's in good condition and everything, and it's monitored, and there's no incidents. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions? If not, this is a public hearing. Is there anybody in the audience who would like to speak up in favor or oppose to this application? If not, what is the wish of the Chairman, I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Selectman Castanetti makes a motion to close the public hearing. Seconded by the Chair. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Ayes have a 5 to 0. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to grant the application of Aggregate Industries, Inc., 1831 Broadway, to extend the special permit S2 to allow the removal of earth and rock and to allow the operation of a quarry at Rear Broadway and Whittier Avenue, Assessor's Plan 2030, Lot A61, and Assessor's Plan 2031 lot A122 for a period of six months. Okay, and that is with those special uh, attachment A, the special conditions. That is seconded by the chair. Wendy, could have a roll call vote, please? Yes. 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 Yes, the ayes have a five to zero. Thank, Thank you. you, Rich. Oh, I, I do see, uh, is that Eric? Just for the record, I want to thank Trimount. Uh, they helped us. Our aggregate, I keep calling it Trimount Aggregate, they helped us on the rail trail to complete the last section of the rail trail. They, they treated the town pretty well, so I want to thank them for that. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, next on the agenda is the 810 public hearing. <clears throat> Notice is hereby given that the Saugus Board of Selectmen will conduct a public hearing on the application of the Saugus Everett Lodge. 401 Main Street, Fred Cohane, manager, for a change in description of the license premise alteration by including the Grove area on the club's all alcohol common victors license and on the entertainment license. This hearing is being held under Mass General Law Chapter 138 in the Town of Saugus Liquor Rules and Regulations. This hearing will be held in the Town Hall Auditorium, 298 Central Street, on September 10, 2013, at 8.10 p.m. Is the applicant here? Yes, Hi, how are you? Good I want to give you a name and address to our clerk. Uh, my name is Steve Doherty, 198 Essex Street in Saugus. Okay. You want to, now, what are you looking for in your application? You want to extend the all alcohol and entertainment for the whole year, but you're only looking for 25 dates? Well, for the, this is for an outdoor picnic grove area that we have. That um, It's really a seasonal uh, rental facility. We, you know, we open it up usually sometime right after Memorial Day and going through at the latest probably Columbus Day. Okay. Any questions by board members? And the hours would be noon time till 7.30. Noon to 7.30, yes. Okay. So what are you looking, uh, uh, Mr. Doherty, Friday, Saturday, and Sundays, the summertime, or Saturday and Sundays? Yeah, the majority of the rentals are, are Saturday and Sunday afternoons. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any questions by board members? Mr. Chairman, I don't have the affidavit for notification to abutters. The abutters weren't notified properly? You don't have the affidavit? He hasn't okay. submitted the affidavit as yet. Okay, so that needs to be submitted. But uh, I know there's people, there's neighbors in the audience that are here opposed to it. Uh, I did talk to a few. Uh, what I'm going to do is continue with the hearing and probably most likely continue it until we receive an affidavit that the neighbors have been notif noticed. Okay. Uh, any questions by board members regarding this application? Okay, if not, this is a public hearing. Is there anybody in the audience who would like to speak in favor or oppose this application? Want to come 
มอนับให้โดเมียม <coughs> Hi, how are you? Good evening. How are you? All right. You want to give your name and address to our clerk, please? Patrice and Michael Provatola, 15 Lindsay Terrace. Hi, how are you? We have also brought a um, letter that 23 of the neighbors have signed as well that we just a handed petition. over. We didn't have okay. notice of the tonight. Thank you. Okay, you can continue. Thank you. Just to um, point out, as we said in the um, in the letter, it's become um, over the past four to five years. Um, markedly different. My husband and I have lived in that neighborhood for 12 years. 15. 15 years. <laughs> Seems like 12. <laughs> um, the, uh, I mean, it's always been some outdoor events there, but the frequency has definitely increased over the last few years, um, and the amount of amplified music has increased um, in the volume to the point where we are and there's other neighbors here as well, not really able to enjoy our own outdoor spaces for the majority of the weekends during the summer. Um, and even inside the house, if you close the doors and windows, um, you still can't hear your own TV. Um, so we found it something that we tolerated for a long period of time because it was infrequent. Um, but the increased frequency has made it, you know, literally, see, we couldn't have a barbecue at our own home um, unless we wanted to listen to the music that the Elks was having. Um, and that's true whether it's a live band or a DJ. Um, my husband is a member of the Elks and has taken it up um, with the management there and asked that they control the volume, at the very least, um, without a lot of response. Um, numerous times. Numerous times. Sometimes, I mean, of late it has been ending around 6, 6.30. Um, in the past, it's gone as late as 10 o'clock at night. Um, and that, later. And later. <laughs> but that hasn't a actually happened in a while. We understand that they are a nonprofit organization, yet entitled to make money, but we also feel it's not a private business that is relying upon that rental of the Grove. We included um, with our letter um, that they do advertise it as being able to have bands and, and DJs, that they have that capacity. Uh, for outdoors. There are function rooms inside the lodge um, that certainly also can be used for live entertainment as well. So our request is that we'd really like it to be eliminated, that amplified music is eliminated outside or at the very least restricted so that we can enjoy some of the weekends as well. Okay. Thank you. There are other neighbors here. Okay. Any questions by board members? Sir? Okay, uh, all the neighbors, would you like to come on up? And okay. just give your name and address, suppose. You don't have to give a speech. Um, oh, Selectman Panetta just, has just a, a question. Quick, just a quick question. <clears throat> sure. When you say the music is restricted, what exactly? I, I'm trying to think of a way that this could work for everyone. What, There's what, some what control some over the volumes that if we made a phone call and said we can't hear our TV, that it would get turned down. That I don't know where the speakers are pointing to. Right. Um, you know, maybe they can be pointed in a different direction. I'm not sure that that wouldn't just move the problem to somebody else's neighborhood, but, um, you know, the, there is, I do have just one map that outlines our house and how it fits into this neighborhood. If we're, we're literally like 35 to 50 yards from the yeah, Grove, from all the music. And certainly- I mean, They've had times down there where there's just background music. It's not a problem, you know, it's acceptable. We had, there's times we can't even sit in the porch and talk, even in the house. I mean, it's, it's really out of control at times. And I've gone down and spoken many a times to the manager, and no response. So. So, I'm not sure how you could restrict yeah. it, but certainly frequency can be restricted so that we could at least have some weekends that we could enjoy. Sure. 
And we take pride in our properties, you know, all our neighbors. We've had neighbors we've talked to there that have been there 50 years. And, and some of them have, like it's about time someone's doing something about it. Because they've been hearing it over the years. Yeah. And the phone numbers and now are it's included. And now it's getting more and more and more and more. It's not, you know, we, we understand they have charitable things. We accept that. But they don't, you know, they don't have, it, everything isn't charitable. So. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I have uh, a question Selectman to the Hall. gentleman. Uh, if it was restricted and if it could be controlled that when you had a problem and you made a phone call and the volume was turned down, does the hour of 7.30, is that acceptable or should that be earlier? That's why I, I want to find out if, it, if, if everything is fine, what hour would the neighborhood like to try to see this end with the music and stuff? I think our opinion is 5 o'clock. Because you, know, you want to have dinner and be able to have a conversation while you're eating dinner. Um, it's not a lot Especially of with the music, 5 o'clock, you know, it's... Yeah, when there's not amplified music, when it's just a crowd... Yeah, it's fine. It, you know, People talking, you know, it's, it's, it's yeah. different, but it's not, it's just the music. I mean, Saturday had a time there, and we understood the music was supposed to stop at 5. It, and it went till 6.10. So, you know, I was going to call the police, and I said, I'm not going to call the police. I'll just speak to you people. Okay. All right. Thank you. And they knew about it, you know, so I, I'm not. Uh, okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Hi, how are you? I want to please give your name and address. Uh, John Doucette, 11 Lindsay Terrace. I live right next door. Basically, I mean, not to duplicate everything they said, but definitely agree with everything they're saying. I mean, there's been times where, you know, I've had to sit, watch TV with my wife and actually turn up, turn up the sound so basically you don't hear the music. So I, I would agree with both of them in saying that restricting the time or restricting the volume in some respects would definitely be very helpful. Okay, thank you. Next. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Anthony Camerato. Um, this is my first summer in the neighborhood, actually. I just bought a home at 3 Lindsay Terrace. And the first time I heard the music, it was on a weekend, and it's in the middle of the afternoon, and I thought someone was having a party, so I just dealt with it, thought it would go away. And, and then I heard it a few more times, and I found out it was the Elks, which I'm a member of also. But, um, yeah, it should be at a minimum, the volume, and should be some kind of restrictions on it. I mean, that's all I have to say about it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody in the, in the audience who would like to speak in favor or oppose to this application? Hi, hey, how are you? <clears throat> May I speak, sir? Sure. Um, Please give your name, name and address. My name is Michael Zellin. I'm not a Saugus resident. I live at 5 Chase Circle in Peabody, Mass. But I hear, I'm here to represent the Elks. Um, I am the treasurer of the organization, and I'm also uh, the chairman of the House Committee, which is the governing body of um, the rentals, the functions that go on there to, to outside. We have, for a good number of years, um, allowed folks to come in and use our Grove. It's not necessarily an Elks function. It's for the general public to come in. Many times, uh, that Grove is donated to the senior citizens of Saugus, to the Boosters Club of the high school. And it's given to them rent free, or a reduced rate, just to clean up. In order for any Elks organization or any fraternal organization to be able to continue its charitable works is to have revenue streams, revenue sources. As a private organization... Excuse me. Uh, want to please turn your cell phones off, whoever, whoever it is. Betty's cell phone. <clears throat> Sorry. Is it, As uh, Sergeant, it, can you go, please check and see whose cell phone's going off, please? <clears throat> Thank you. Sorry about that. As, as, as a private organization, our income streams are very limited. Um, a number about six years ago, the Saugus Everett Lodge of Elks invested considerable money in its facility to the tune of $700,000. Um, again, our only revenue source is the rental of our property and the income that we derive from that. Um, I don't, I don't want to uh, say that what has been told to you is, is factual, but some of it is not factual. 
I am the chairman of the House Committee or the governing body, and I have not received one complaint from a single neighbor. Coming into the Elks Lodge and maybe telling a few members in the grill room or even telling one of the employees that you have a problem, I don't think is addressing the problem. And I expressed that <coughs> to, the, to one of the speakers here this evening. I think if you look at the police reports, they'll tell you that to, in their records, they have three occasions that they've come to our lodge. One was because of suspicious activity where we called the police. Another time was a, an, a rental that was on us inside that we called the police. And the third time was the one event that, has, that brought this matter to you tonight. It was a member who abused their privilege, did not listen to the help to close down. Their contract was over at 7.30, continued to put the music on. Having said that, as the employer of those people, I have told them that I would have rather had them call the police at 7.30 and have the people taken from the property or asked to leave the property than have a neighbor do it, because we try to be a good neighbor. Both of those individuals that were on duty that night were reprimanded and were told that if, if there was any other occurrence like that, they would be terminated. We try to be a very, very good neighbor. As many of you know, we donate the land for the Little League. Uh, the Little League itself is there five or six days a week with a lot of activity, with loudspeakers. Um, you know, so there is a lot of activity on our property, a lot of it not having to do with our organization at all. Our outside grove is used approximately 16 times a season. Again, many of them don't even have music. Many of them are over by 5 o'clock. But we do have the occasional time, um, like this past Sunday, uh, uh, Saturday, when we had our family outing their members and their, and their children. The music did stop at 5.30, because I was there, and I made the disc jockey uh, close down at 5.30 as required. So any other thought of going beyond that just did not happen. And again, I conferred with the folks who were the chairpersons of that, concerned about the particular neighbor that spoke tonight, you know, having a problem of calling the police. I was told by the two chairmen that they had spoken to him, he did not have a problem with it going later. He also indicated to you that he spoke five or six times uh, to the management. That didn't happen. And I addressed that to him directly about a week ago. We're not asking for um, a, you know, a wild party place. Many of the things that go on there are family events. As I said, uh, graduation parties uh, for local students, um, birthday parties for children. Um, we even had one weekend where we sponsored, in conjunction with your drug office, a day there to educate the children of, of Saugus about the ills of drug abuse. We also had another day that we invited all of the families and the children who live in the hotels and motels on Route 1, providing them with backpacks and a, and a picnic. And yes, we did have music for them to enjoy. So if that's, you know, if, if I don't know how else to say that we, we're good neighbors. We try to be good neighbors. And if there is a concern, if we're properly notified, we will handle it. We will take care of it. We are a benevolent and protective order. We're not, we're nonprofit. If we don't have these times, then we cannot provide the community with the dictionaries that we do for the third graders, um, donating to Hall to the so fire department. Kind of wrap it up yeah. in the next so minute. All I'm saying is please give us some consideration. <clears throat> okay, thank you. If you take away an, an income stream, it's going to impact what we do for the community. Okay, thank you. Uh, next. Hi, how are you? Please give your name and address to our clerk. Uh, Ed Carlson, 26 Donna Road, uh, town meeting member in Precinct 9. Um, here with two hats tonight. Um, I, I hope the neighbors will feel free to call me as a town meeting member with any complaints about noise uh, coming from the Grove area. 
I'm sure the other town meeting members would like to hear about it also. Um, I'm sure there's some kind of compromise can be made about the, the loudness of the speakers or the time that they can be used. Um, but I'm also speaking as a proud member of an Elks Lodge. And the previous speaker did mention that um, it's a revenue stream. And that revenue stream comes into the lodge and immediately leaves into the host communities, into the uh, helping the, the veterans and the active duty service people. Um, many lodges of Elks visit VA hospitals. They uh, gather, uh, use cell phones and turn them into cell, uh, calling cards for people overseas, for the service people to call. Um, at Christmas time and Thanksgiving, uh, they use the, the revenue stream to provide uh, uh, Thanksgiving baskets and Christmas baskets for needy people. And something that's close to my heart is the Dictionary Project. Uh, we assure that all third graders in the host communities, Saugus included, uh, gets a dictionary in their hand every year. So I hope that some compromise can be made about the, the noise and the uh, activity going up there at the Grove. And um, I hope uh, nothing would be curtailed about uh, being able to use the Grove to continue the revenue stream so the benevolent part of our order, benevolent and protective order of Elks, can continue to function. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. How you doing, sir? Please give your name and address to our Ken Rice, 44 Tontaquan Ave, Saugus. Uh, I am the vice chairman of the House Committee, and I have never been notified of noise complaints from any of the neighbors uh, surrounding the building. I do know, as Mike said, it was an isolated incident, and the bartenders and the maitre d's who work out there, we uh, formulated a plan, and we told them this is how you will respond if there were any complaints. And this is what you do if you, you know, somebody wants to play longer than what they've rented the Grove for. And everything's in place to try to take care of the neighbors so that they don't have any complaints anymore. Um, I'm not going to go into all the good deeds that we've done as Elks here in Saugus and uh, in Everett and other surrounding communities. I think most of those are known. But we are trying to be good neighbors, and we have instructed our bartenders and maitre d's uh, on how to act properly and how to keep the situations under control in the future. Thank you. Okay. So anybody else would like to speak in favor or oppose this application? Hi, how are you, ma'am? Please give your name and address to our clerk. Pat McGibbon, 79 Hobson Street. And I, again, I'm not going to reiterate a lot of the stuff that they say, but I've been a member of the Elks and an officer for many years now. And we have a meeting every other Tuesday, the first and third Tuesday of the month. So when an issue is brought up to us, it is brought on the floor, and we do deal with it. Um, sometimes the people that, you know, we have to uh, reprimand or whatever don't like it, but we have to be good neighbors, as everybody has said so far. And I am in charge of a couple of committees that we do things for the kids, like the kids of the hotel that where we had a barbecue, and uh, had, they had a fun day getting them out of the hotels. We bust, bust them up there the whole bit. Um, and the drug awareness thing, I worked with the Saugus We Care group because we obviously have a problem and we're trying to help to stop the drug problem. But if, they, if we do lose this revenue stream, there is so much that we do for the community that we're not going to be able to do because we have to provide for our own property and so forth and we have uh, different fees that we have to pay to the Grand Lodge and whatever. But, so that would cut down on our stream. So, I mean, like I said, hopefully we can come across uh, some kind of a compromise so that we can continue to do the charitable works that we've been, you know, that what we stand for. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Is there anybody else? If not, I would suggest we continue this uh, since we don't have an affidavit uh, uh, from the uh, Mr. Doherty. You're gonna have to supply that to the board. To, uh, that, that says that the neighbors have been notified. I, I apologize, Mr. Chairman. I was under the impression we had submitted everything that was required. Yeah, okay. I, I, I'll so we'll look continue into that this to the 24th. Okay. Okay. Do you have a motion to continue this public Be, hearing? Before I make the motion, may I ask sure. a question? Sure. What you submitted to us the last time was a listing of all the dates when you were having functions. Yes. And we're at the end of the season because you said you're pretty much done on Columbus Day. Is that correct? Yes. Now, do you have for next year, I'm 
assuming that you already have some certain dates, probably already planned for the family day and things like that? At, at this day, we do not, no. Okay. We, um, we would normally sit down towards the end of the calendar year and line up our, our own like family day and our in-house events for the following year. And, and of course, that, whether those are going to be outdoor or indoor events depends on where this goes. We're not putting the cart before the horse here. No, I'm just thinking in terms of the time, the cutoff of the entertainment. I mean, if there was a family day that you, you know, if there was a few days that you needed to have the entertainment till 7.30, but typically you would stop at, say, 5, because that's what the neighbors like. I'm just trying to think what would be a good compromise. I understand what you're saying. Um, yeah, again, the 12.30 to 7.30, 7.30 would, be, would really be considered a late function for, for two reasons. One, because beyond that, it is, you know, bothersome to the neighbors if you're if it's eight o'clock at night and there's music going on. I, I wholeheartedly understand that. The other thing is, once you get past dusk out there, the mos we're right next to the retaining pond behind um, the electric company. There, the mosquitoes would literally carry you away. So it's not really a night venue. It's not not suited for that. Um, but 7:30 would be the late end. A lot of the the times that, the, especially the rental functions that we have over the summer, are generally from like one to five in the afternoon, two to six, you know, something in that range. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I have one other question, question please. Thank you. Uh, the gentleman before you from the, uh, from the lodge said that the majority of the time the music is off by 5.30. And the neighbors are looking at around 5 o'clock. So we're, we're pretty close right there as far as when the music should stop. Uh, we basically just need to have that if it is too loud that somebody who makes a call, it should be, you know, instant and, and then have it turned down. Uh, you said most of the functions are done around 6, 6.30, but you're still looking to try to stay open until till, 7.30, though. Again, we do have functions that run that late, but they're, they're more the exception. Okay. But if you're open until 7, then around 5, 5.30, the music would be off. Or well, you would still play music until 7:30. If we, if we, if it's a rental function, if okay. someone comes in and rents the 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 Grove, say from, you know, three to seven, a four-hour rental, then they they would expect that their DJ would be playing throughout that time too. I would imagine. Well, that's Again, what that's I'm where that 7:30. Well, well, that's what I'm trying to get here in. because you know because if the majority of the time everything's closed down at around 5:30, there are exceptions that you would still want to be doing music until 7 7:30. Then. Yes. Okay. As far as a a decibel level. I don't know. Um, I'm not an expert in that area, but um, just listening to both sides here, I'm thinking there should. I know there are devices that can measure that fairly simply and uh, and inexpensively, and I'm sure we could work something out with an acceptable level. You know, whether it's uh, getting the neighbors, the parties together with the board of health, and coming down on a Saturday and just playing some music, and so and trying to establish what is too loud, what is uh, what is acceptable, and and what it what it doesn't interfere with their enjoyment of their property, which oh, by all means they're entitled to and would with, be willing with, to. Yeah. Also too with music, it depends yeah. on what type, because up on Route 1 we had an establishment that you walk in and your ears were just about given out and you could hear it because there was that bass thumping music. You could hear it yep. a half a mile away down the street. It was shaking people's houses. And you walk into the building and you couldn't even hear yourself think, never mind how loud it was. And I can't understand why the, the people would play music to the point where if somebody was 30 feet from the DJ and you have to yell at them to talk to them, then for the people that are there, the music would be considered to, to be loud. But it's the type of music, too, that some sure. sounds carry more than others. And we know that because of what we've been going through up on, up on Route 1 over the last 10 years. So. Yeah, but again, with the, putting some system in place to measure that, yeah. it sounds like it might be something we can work with the neighbors on and come to a compromise where everybody's happy, because that's obviously our goal in this. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so do I have a motion to continue this hearing? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Lockman Panetta makes a motion to continue the hearing, seconded by the chair. All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, abstain, ayes have a five to zero. Next on the agenda is the 815 public hearing. <clears throat> Notice is hereby given that the Saugus Board of Selectmen will conduct a public hearing on the application of 181 South Main Street, DBA Auto Drive 1, for a special S2 permit to allow storage of vehicles for sale to be located at 1200 Broadway Assessors Plan 1025, Lot 145. Application is also being made for a Class 2 auto dealer's license. 
hearing will be held in the Saugus Town Hall Auditorium, 298 Central Street on, on uh, 91013 at 815 p.m. Is the applicant or his or her representative here? Hi, how are you? Good evening, my name is Tony DiBiazio. I represent Auto Drive One. Okay, you wanna give the board an overview of your business plan? Sure, we provide loans to the um, deep subprime market. In other words, people that um, his credit's been hurt over the last six, seven years, um, have no other place to go. We help them out. Uh, we're a family-run business. We help a lot of families get back into cars after they've had repossessions. Um, it's, our business practice is sort of like a JD buy rider. If you're familiar with them and seen their commercials, uh, we try and help people out a little bit further, um, help their credit. We have a huge repeat and referral business at our other stores. We've been down in West Bridgewater for 13 years now. We've opened up uh, four other stores since then. Um, a couple this past year in Swansea and in Sandwich, which are doing very well. Uh, we target areas basically um, certain like demographics and by population. We have a loan center in the, um, Liberty, um, in the Liberty Tree Mall in Danvers that we just interview people and we sign them down in our Natick store. Uh, most of the people that go to Danvers are from the Lynn, Chelsea, Saugus area. So we feel the need in Saugus that we can definitely capture the market in this area and nobody else really does what we do up here. Okay, uh, we did receive comments from the building inspector. He was looking at a uh, parking plan. Yes, I did, I did hire um, the associates, um, Art and Dwyer Incorporated, it's a local firm. Um, they did a parking plan. I just got it back today, so we can do it. If, if the appease the board, I'll pass them out. Yeah, and he can take it, a look yeah. at those, and we can get, also get them to the building commissioner. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. It's a um, small lot that was previously a um, vacuum cleaner store for 18 or I think it was 28 years. It was quite a while. Um, we met the landlord out there. We love the location. Um, I guessed on 20 cars when I wrote the letter. Um, we can comfortably fit 15 in there. Um, that's with giving a two-way access roads with a 24-foot easement. We can use the Midas next door, the same owner of the pro both property, he owns both properties, the landlord. Um, so entering and egress is not an issue. Uh, we plan on using Midas for our repairs at that location, so customers wouldn't have far to go, they'll be right next door. Um, it's just a unique little building that we like to add to our portfolio. Okay. Yeah, I did take a site visit down there and, and I looked at your parking plan. I said I couldn't, yeah, it was, couldn't figure out that you get 20 cars in there, but the 15 seems more the se reasonable. The second I got the, I hired um, Art and Dwyer to take care of it. They yeah. just, if you see the stamp on it, it's today's stamp. They just sent it to me like an hour before the meeting. Um, We'll get it to the, obviously, get it to the um, building department. There was some other comments in there about um, swab sink and handicap accessible bathrooms. The building is as it is. We, we just plan on going in, rug painting it. Um, it's been the same for a long time. We're not doing any major renovations in the building. We're just rug paint, adding desks. I mean, it's, it's real basic. Okay. We, like, we like to keep it wide open. There's one separate office already built in there. We like to keep it wide open. Um, we have interview stations. About 98% of our business is by appointment. Uh, we don't advertise our vehicles online. Uh, it's mostly all by lead generation. So it's not like uh, we get a lot of stop in traffic by people seeing our cars online and they'll go stop at auto drive on Route 1. Even though it's a tremendous location visually, we still, our business practice is all by appointment. You know, we don't turn people away to stop in, but History has it as, you know, 99 to 98 percent of our business is all by appointments. 
the quarry came back okay. Hours of operation Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Saturday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And Sunday by appointment only? Yes. Okay. Uh, you, you're familiar with the Chapter 140, Section 58, regarding this uh, second class yes. two auto dealers. You need a bond. Yes. And we need a letter from an auto uh, repair shop that you have contracted with. Okay. That's, okay. I, I'm well, doing the same. I've done all the licensing for all the different stores we've opened up. Um, the bond is actually with uh, CNA Surety right now. I'm waiting to just get a copy of it back. We've already applied for it. Um, we're opening up another store in Dorchester subsequently. So both stores, are, it's a race to see who opens first. <laughs> so we are, I know the procedure and all that stuff. So you'll have, I have to talk to the Midas people next door and let them know that, you know, we haven't introduced ourselves yet because we wanted to make sure we're going to get the license and then do all that stuff afterwards. Okay, so how much were you born for? 25000 25, okay. Yes. And uh, if we approve this, it'll be on the condition that you have a, uh, a letter of agreement from Midas oh, that, you, that you give to our office within 14 days. Definitely. That's what we usually yes. do. Okay, thank you. Any questions by board members? I, I just have one quick question. Selectman Panetta. Because a building inspector was concerned at the 20 and now you're backing down to 15, mm -hmm. do we need our building inspector to go back out and take a look or do you, does everyone feel comfortable that the 15 is sufficient because our building inspector hasn't seen your new plan yet? I don't have an issue with um, doing a contingent upon him reviewing the plan. That's why I hired a private firm to make sure we had the right egresses going in and out in the right travel lanes. Um, they know the cold better than I do. That's why I had them draw up the plan. Okay. Uh, I, I reviewed the site. I, I, don't have, I don't have a problem with approving the 15, the 20. 20 I did. I counted the spaces out. A little tight. I'd, yeah. I'd still like to put the contingency that the building inspector was fine Not an issue. Because we, we, we have to wait for the bond to come in anyway. Okay. Any other questions by board members? Uh, Mr. Chairman. Selectman Hawley. Uh, just one we always um, ask this to. All the cars you're going to own are clear title to you, and you're not selling cars for anybody else. Correct. You're going to own them all, okay? Correct. Because every car dealership that comes up here, we always want to be sure that that you own the clear title to every car. We keep then, a record. So if there's any issues, it comes back to you, not that you sold someone else's car and then the person has a problem and now it's between you, but you sold your friend's car and then it gets into a problem. Okay. We don't broker deals. Okay. We don't, um, we keep a record book, used car record book by law at every store. Um, that the state police can stop at any given time. A local police can stop at any given time, check the record book. 95% um, of my vehicles come from auction that we buy. <laughs> Another five percent come from wholesalers that we buy from. It's never an issue that we're um, putting friends' cars in the lot and things like that. Okay, thank you. Okay. One more thing, Mr. Chairman. You have sure. a small utility Selective bill that's perhaps. outstanding. Has that been paid? Excuse me. You have a small utility bill that is outstanding. Has that been paid? On, um, on the building itself. Yep. There's a utility bill. We have a copy of it in our package. Hmm. I didn't see that. I'll talk to the landlord of the building. Okay. I, I wasn't aware of this, any it's, utilities. It's, it's not a large invoice. Oh. I'm not concerned about oh, okay. it. It's yeah, just that typically we want to make sure before we grant any S2 permit his, that all bills are paid. Oh, yeah. His, his family's owned the building in the Midas building for many years now. Um, they're upstanding people. They're not, you know, I wouldn't worry about any um, bills that are not current right now. It was only $40. I'll so. speak to him about it. He probably doesn't even Some know change. about it. He probably doesn't even know about it, to be honest yeah. with you. I'll bring him aware of it tomorrow. I'll send him an okay. email. Uh, any other questions by board members? If not, this is a public hearing. Is there anybody in the audience who would like to speak, uh, speak in favor or oppose this application? Okay, if not, we have a motion. Uh, motion to close the public hearing. So I'll move, Mr. Chairman. Select McCastanay makes a motion to close the public hearing. Seconded by the chair. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Ayes have a five to zero. I'll make the motion, Mr. Chairman, to grant the application 181 South Main Street, 8 DBA Auto Drive 1. For special permit S2 to allow storage of vehicles for sale to be located at 1200 Broadway. Assessors Plan 1025, Lot 145. Application is also made for Class Two auto dealers license. Uh, we're going to limit it to 15 vehicles, as opposed to the, to the um, 20. 15, 15 display. 
15 displays. We had, we had four par employee parking and two customer, I mean, four customer parking and two um, employee parking already in the plan. Okay. Just and um, subject to the building inspector's approval of the parking yes. plan. And the bond for $25,000. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And we'll include the uh, letter, of, letter agreement of agreement from NIDAS. Four uh, within yeah, 14 days in our office, okay, and the hours of operation, 9 a, Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 8 p.m., Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., Saturday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., and Sunday uh, appointments only, and no uh, repair of vehicles on the property. Correct. Okay. And, Mr. Chairman, also, so too, that about it? clear title to all the vehicles, too. Okay, we put that in every S2 permit that mm -hmm. we give for a dealership. Okay. We don't deal with... Yep salvage or anything like that we don't that's not our business practice okay and that's it uh wendy could have a roll call vote please mr castanetti yes mr Wallach? yes mr. mitchell yes mr. Panetta? yes mr. Serino? yes the ayes have a five to zero good luck good luck, good luck. thank you good very luck. much have a good evening okay next public hearing notice is hereby given that the Saugus Board of Selectmen will conduct a public hearing on the application of WNS2 Inc. Mets Cab with an office at 133D North Street, Newtonville, for a modification of a taxi license for two additional taxi cabs. The hearing will be held in the Saugus Town Hall Auditorium, 298 Central Street, on September 10, 2013, at 8:25 p.m. Is the applicant or his or her representative here? Okay. I don't see them, so we'll table this to the end of the meeting. Make a motion, Mr. Chairman, to table it. Okay, Selectman Hallett makes a motion that we table this hearing. Seconded by the chair. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. I have a five to zero. Okay, in the last public hearing, 830 public hearing, notice is hereby given that the Saugus Board of Selectmen will conduct a public hearing on the application of Milo Sap Sub. DBA Subway 508 Lincoln Air for Common Victors License. Application is also being made for a variance to waive the external grease trap requirement under Article 4, Section 21 of the Town of Saugus Store Rules and Regulations. This hearing is being held on Article 3, Section 12 of the Town of Saugus Store Rules and Regulations. This hearing will be held in the Saugus Town Hall Auditorium, 298 Central Street, on September 10, 2013, at 8.30 p.m. The applicant or his or her representative. Hi, how are you? Good evening. I want to give the board an overall view of your business plans? Absolutely. <clears throat> uh, my name is Vincent Mioli from uh, 1200 Salem Street in Linfield. Okay. And Subway is probably the fastest growing uh, quick serve restaurant in the country, actually in the world now. They are focused <clears throat> on mostly the healthy kind of fast food alternative, healthy subs, bread, snacks. Um, they have a very uh, unique business model in that the franchise is relatively inexpensive to start, inexpensive to run, and um, kind of a quick build. There's no cooking involved within the store, so there's no grease produced or minimal grease, not more than you would have in a normal household. There's no frying, there's no grilling. Everything comes pre-cooked. Everything comes either cold or or is, I'm sorry, it's served cold or heated, um, and the bread is, bra is uh, baked in the oven. Okay, and your hours of operation? Subway generally uh, likes, uh, I believe it's about 98 hours a week, so generally it would be from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m., unless there's a uh, ordinance or restriction by the town. Is that Eight. seven days a week? I'm sorry, Monday through Friday, it's 7 a.m. to 10 p.m., Saturdays is 8 to 10, and uh, Sunday is 8 to 9. Okay. How many seats do you propose? The plan as it stands now is 33 seats. How many? 33. 33 seats, okay. And you have plenty of parking. Yes, sir. According to the parking plan. Okay. Other than that, any questions from board members? Mr. Chairman. Select McCastanetti. Um, you said nothing's cooked on the premises. No, sir. So th there's no, the, no grease submissions to the system whatsoever? No, sir. Utensils, dishes? There's no dishes. Everything is on paper and there's plastic uh, forks and knives. Thank you. 
question? I still like my pinheader. How about the meatballs? I mean, they're very They're greasy. heated in the microwave. They're heated in the microwave, they come but, cooked but, and heated. but you still have to clean. No, they come in a bag that's within the container, and at the end, the bag gets thrown away. It's very quick, very, very neat. If you think of like a frozen lean cuisine, you know how it comes in the mm -hmm. tray with the prep with the plastic covering, that would be the same type of but thing. But I go to Subway all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of us do. And there's the metal, they put them in the metal containers. Exactly. And Within that metal container is a plastic bag that gets put into the microwave. They all get heated at the same time. And then at, when that is empty, that bag gets pulled out and trashed. Whatever's left in the container is very minimal. Mr. Chairman, Selectman Hall, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Do you know what size the, the grease trap is, the internal one right now? The one we would need is about 150. How much is it? 150 gallons. It's 150 gallons, so you've got 150 gallon grease That's trap. That's what we want, yes. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Okay, any other questions by board members? Okay, this is a public hearing. Is there anybody in the audience who would like to speak in favor or oppose this application? Okay. No. Okay. What is the wish of the board? Mr. Chairman, I think this is a good example of a reason to waive the requirement for an external grease trap. There's nothing being put into the system. I don't believe we should put the burden on a business owner to incur an expense that's not warranted. So I'll, I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Okay, Selectman Castaneda makes a motion to close the public hearing. Seconded by the chair. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Ayes have a five to zero. And I'll make a motion, Mr. Chairman, to grant the application of Mioli Sap Subs LLC DBA Subway 508 Lincoln Ave for common victualers license. Application is also being made for variance to waive the external grease trap requirement under Article 4, Section 21 of the Town of Saugus, sewer rules and regulations. And I'll, I'll, I'll uh, make a motion to grant that as well. Okay. Mr. Chairman, can we do two, two separate votes on it? For can we do two separate votes? We'll do the comic victim. Okay. We'll do the grease yeah. trap. Right. Okay. Because we've got to put the seats in the hours of operation. Right. And all yeah. that so the uh, okay. chair, chair will uh, second the, the motion for the common victor's license. Uh, what was that? The hour was what? 7 to 10 p.m. Monday through Friday, 8 to 10 p.m. on Saturday, and 8, 8 to 9 p.m. on Sunday. Right, and 30 33 seats. seats. Okay. Okay, that's seconded by the chair. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Ayes have it 5 to 0. Now, uh, the second motion is regarding the grease trap waiver. That's seconded by the chair. Well, uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Ayes have a five to zero. Good luck. Thank Good you. Luck. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Is there anybody here from the uh, Mets cab? They showed up yet? The board doesn't mind. Do you want to take a short recess? Yes. I'll make a motion, five minute recess. Okay, seconded by the chair. So all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Ayes have a five to zero. No, okay. Wait a few more minutes. Uh, next, uh, Mr. Manager, your report. Uh, good evening. Um, just to um, I may jump around a little bit. Um, uh, so, some different uh, happenings, I guess, with the economic development uh, coordinator. Uh, he's really uh, Robert Luongo. Uh, some of you have met him. I think all of you have met him. We had sort of a meet and greet and uh, interaction, but um, really hit the ground running here. And uh, he's working on many different things. Uh, as you know, he's working on the uh, Mill District overlay as well as the uh, um, a waterfront, uh, a waterfront zoning overlay. Uh, he's already put together um, a uh, medical marijuana zoning bylaw that the board uh, had a, a keen interest in. So we're sort of vetting that through now, and um, and that's something that uh, we'll be looking at uh, bringing to town meeting, uh, to the board, and then to town meeting um, in the for the fall. 
Um, also uh, had a meeting today um, with uh, uh, a group, uh, Barry uh, Bluestone, that uh, is the uh, director at the uh, Dukakis uh, Center for Public Policy at Northeastern. Um, he's the director there. Uh, looking at doing a, uh, a survey here to look at uh, with the chamber, uh, with the town, and, the, and, uh, and, and basically they've done this in um, quite a few communities, including Lynn. You probably have seen some of that written up um, to really assess our functions and our processes as well as what attracts businesses here. Um, and they're, they're really doing this on a, 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 a regional and, and on, a, on a statewide basis. Um, to really try to uh, find out what attracts businesses. And, and um, had a meeting today that was very uh, exciting to talk about the fact that uh, with the uniqueness of having what we have in the town, um, really sort of the ch smaller business chamber versus um, trying to attract larger type businesses that generate uh, higher revenue on Route 1. And it's really a contrast that's different and unique um, that uh, we sort of really haven't... Uh, uh, I think really, if, you know, haven't been in the forefront of that at all um, in decades and probably ha haven't been at all. And there's a lot of opportunities here. So uh, that's something that uh, we're going to be organizing and looking at uh, moving forward with a meeting and bringing a lot of the stakeholders uh, to do that in some sort of a public forum. And then they sort of take the data and uh, put this through a uh, model that they put together um, at Northeastern and uh, bring out the results and talk about the results. Um, so pretty interesting. So that's something that's coming down the, the pipeline. Um, some other things that are going on um, as you're with the uh, Ballad School um, was one of the other projects that's completed with the, the handicap and um, emergency access. Um, we've uh, resealed uh, the crack. They had a lot of trip hazards for the children down there, so they, uh, we had them cut out, um, you know, those saw them out and uh, repaved them and then seal coated. The, 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 uh, that area there had, had never been seal coated uh, since its existence, so they had to put two coats of that on. Um, and they just went through it. I had the building commissioner go down there with uh, building maintenance and DPW a little bit, but uh, we had some businesses donate some material and labor. Um, to really uh, look at some of the safety issues and, and uh, we're, we're moving forward with trying to, uh, you know, trim it. We had the trees trimmed down there and whatnot, but uh, I think it's, it's more of a safer environment to, than the steers that they were using and they're sort of satisfied what they were looking for at a cheaper price. Um, you know, we started pricing out uh, a lift that the, the school department was looking for and it just safety-wise, uh, it was um, blocking some of the egress and the building commissioner inspector thought that, uh, that that wouldn't, in the fire department, that wouldn't be the best option. So this, this ramp uh, seemed like the best option. Um, also, uh, the Belmont the Middle School, uh, we've, uh, as you know, we're having the uh, ceremony on Thursday and uh, we've had some work being done down there as much as we can uh, with the DPW, so I want to thank them, trying to get um, things uh, squared away and, and uh, put together nice for the school year. Um, also, as you're aware, the, the project is, uh, you know, uh, just about closed and completed, and um, we have the uh, open house that's going to take place on Saturday, which is also the uh, Special Olympics. Uh, one of the other things that, uh, as you're aware, the board had voted for um, the uh, to, to enter into negotiations with Tangent, uh, the solar company, and looking at they had an exclusivity of uh, putting together a feasibility. Uh, study on solar panels on the uh, different uh, town buildings as well as the uh, up at the DPW, the um, landfill. Uh, that is becoming uh, is to, uh, you know, I think even more, more than expected initially as far as uh, the savings and they're putting some things together and I, I hope to be uh, coming in front of the board at some point for the uh, approval to move forward with that. Uh, um, it, it's definitely very promising and will save money for the schools as well as the town uh, generating a, a much less um, utility. Um, also, we're moving forward. We had a conference call uh, this past week on the uh, management perf performance uh, um, program using data with the UMass Collins Center grant that we were awarded. Uh, it's, it's a stat net or city net uh, program and it's it's basically sort of what goes on in the in the in the private sector that is now um, sort of on the cutting edge with municipalities of trying to set benchmarks and trying to collect da data um, starting off with the police and, and um, DPW 
um, in, in collecting data and, and helping making management decisions to uh, help provide better service and, and uh, more efficiencies. And so that's a five month uh, tie in that we have and we would be um, that's either going to start sometime in no, uh, between November and January. Um, it looks like we have a stat date and there's some training. We've already sent some people to the conference they had in August. Um, and it, it's very exciting in the sense of um, being able to bring um, and use data to make better management and organizational uh, changes. Um, also, uh, we had talked about it um, with the uh, fuel. Um, we talked about it at the last meeting, the fuel um, tank that uh, feeds the generator down at the, at the uh, uh, Lincoln Ave pumping station. Just to get an update on that, um, things look um, maybe promising, and I, I don't want to get our hopes up too soon, but they did do some uh, um, survey down there, looked at it, and did some digging up um, um, on, on the uh, um, pipe down there, and it looks like that the, um, the pipe itself that was the feed. Um, it looked like it had some issues, but there's no leakage, and it looks like that we may be able to just plumb it from in-house, from building maintenance, replumb that, and we may not have any issues. So that that'll be a huge cost savings if that that's the case. So we'll see within the next uh, this week whether that's something that'll fix, and that we won't have to go through uh, what we were talking about the last meeting. Um, <clears throat> Also, I wanted to thank uh, Billy Diot. Um, one of the things that uh, he had volunteered and, and assisted and did a great job, and he used to do it when he was on the uh, police department, when I was on the police department with him, is he, we did an audit uh, of the uh, town vehicles and what's registered and what we have for plates and match them up so that we have a current list to be able to provide to our insurance company. And uh, that's something that hadn't been done in quite a while. So uh, I want to thank him. Uh, he did a great job with that. And um, he, he knows you know, the ins and outs of that and, and used to do it while he was here. And I think it's sort of since he retired, hasn't, we haven't, that hasn't been kept up to date. Um, also this week at a, a meeting with the uh, AG's office and uh, the program that Janet Lucy ha uh, has brought to Saugus, which I think is, is great to um, help uh, property values and, and sort of, um, and, and that's the receiver, receivership program. Um, and the building commissioner also attended and we had a very uh, fruitful discussion uh, about upcoming properties and uh, different properties within the community that might be, uh, um, you know, a... Uh, uh, attractive to a receivership uh, to be able to renovate them and, and turn them over so that they're not vacant, uh, abandoned properties. Um, just an update on uh, what the school department been re meeting uh, very regularly with the superintendent of schools, uh, very productive, um, feel that uh, we're both on a, a good start uh, as far as working together. Um, did have a meeting this week on the NEOS uh, report and the deficiencies that were identified there and uh, we're working out uh, trying to figure out what solutions we need to do um, while pending uh, waiting to hear from an SOI. Obviously uh, the SOI, whether it be a, um, a renovation or a new school, which obviously I think the town has spoken that we're looking to try to get a new school and I think everybody's pushing in that direction. Um, but once we have that information, then I think it makes it easier for what we would do in, the, in regard to NEOS um, for the accreditation and a plan to go forward, which um, there's a letter that has to be produced by the school department by October 1st. Um, so we're working, working with that at this point. Um, also, we're in the process of interviewing. We have a couple of retirements that take place on the police department, so we're looking um, at interviewing this actually this week uh, to bring on two new police officers. Um, they'll have to go through the whole process, and as you're aware, we had hired some that just got out of the academy, I think, a couple of months ago, and they're just finishing up their um, uh, FTO training, uh, field training program, um, which uh, they're doing very well, according to the chief. Um, also, just waiting, I should be having it this, w this week, um, moving forward, uh, a, a proposal from the Collins, UMass Collins Center, as we talked about, uh, for a, a town-wide capital improvement plan, so that we'll have some... Um, uh, a proposal and going from forward and I think we we've talked about this you know privately and somewhat publicly that um, the existence of a capital improvement plan really you know hasn't existed for 20 years and we're really starting from scratch 
uh, coming in here and trying to look at what we have for facilities and, and inventory. There is no, n none of that exists. So we'll be putting this together from scratch and trying to make assessments on, you know, f uh, whether it's air conditioning units or um, heating equipment or playgrounds and, and whatnot. Th that's going to be um, put together. So it'll be pretty extensive and I think initially probably cost, you know, uh, more costly, but then we have a model to move forward with to keep updated. Um, also, um, as you're aware, uh, the rail trail uh, is, was completed, uh, the last section of that, and um, I don't know if the board would like, uh, maybe we can have some sort of a dedication uh, if you're interested. I think that this is a, a, a big milestone for the, the board and, and the town of Saugus as far as having a, a, such a recreational trail that I know at the beginning, like anything, everything is conflict and controversy and different opinions, but I think as a whole, when you balance it, this is a, a positive thing for Saugus and the quality of life, and as you walk by, you see so many people there, and I think this is something that's gonna require ongoing maintenance and things that we need to probably budget or you know get some adoptive um, you know, adoption to you know parts of the trail or trying to improve it um, and then work out different issues that are going on there. But uh, it's ver I think it's very successful and I think that's one of the you know better accomplishments that that's happened in the town in a few years. Um, also, uh, just an update too, as you're aware, last year uh, when when I had taken over. Um, I had looked to see what kind of grants were available for police and fire, and we had applied for the SAFER grant, which uh, is a, a, a grant through FEMA that uh, brings uh, adequate staffing to a fire department. Um, unfortunately, we weren't able to get that grant. We, we didn't get that grant, but that was, um, as you're aware, we're, we don't have enough staffing right now on the fire department to even um, to, uh, um, to man the third apparatus or the Essex Street Fire Station, never mind a third station that was voted on by town meeting. Um, so I've just reapplied for that grant. Um, uh, the deadline was August 31st, and that's been submitted for eight firefighters, and it would be great if we uh, are able to, sometimes you have to apply for these grants more than once, if we're able to get that and actually have the, uh, uh, the correct manning so that we can staff the Essex Street um, apparatus uh, to have a third apparatus. Uh, it doesn't not only, if financially uh, better for the town, but uh, for the uh, firefighter safety as well as public safety, um, it, it would be a positive thing for Saugus. Uh, just to give an update on some of the projects that are going on around town, uh, the Route 1 uh, sewer substation uh, with, connected with Walmart, uh, all the piping for new Force Main has been installed on the highway. Uh, the new concrete chambers for the wet well and pumps and the valve uh, vault has been installed. Uh, there is still some piping work that needs to be completed. The control panel and electronic components is being fabricated off site and when delivered will be installed. Uh, they're right on target with uh, their timeline that we uh, push to have them um, work uh, concurrently with uh, the project that's uh, bu building the actual infrastructure of the building. Uh, there'll be a new natural gas uh, uh, fired emergency generator installed with a power backup. Uh, the station is all, um, if all goes well, will uh, with deliveries of equipment, the station should be up and running sometime in late October. So that's that's that would be uh, you know p positive as far as getting the uh, all that infrastructure put together. That was part of the site plan review. Uh, Main Street Station, um, I just gave you an update on that. Um, a, um, um, let's see, the 20-inch valve installation on Lincoln Ave. Um, as you might see, the Lincoln Ave project is sort of starting to get underway. Uh, one of the things that's being done first, and we talked about it at the last meeting, is the MWRA. Um, they're uh, doing it, the labor and cost of, um, of replacing a valve um, that uh, is a shutoff main that's at the end of Lincoln Ave and uh, Revere, um, Saugus so Revere line. Um, and then uh, the Lincoln Ave Road construction contractors have been installing signage in the area uh, this week of um, area of construction and will begin uh, with the removal and preparation of some sidewalks um, probably towards the end of the, this week or the beginning of next week. Um, uh, just to give an update also on Hamilton Street at Pace Road, I don't know if you guys have seen it, but uh, the, we had a Boy Scout uh, of Troop 64 and uh, he did a great job on the side of the road. His name is uh, Alexander 
uh, Bartolo, 62. Uh, re re 62, yeah, recruited <laughs> uh, scouts for the project uh, to attain his Eagle badge. Uh, he coordinated all the donations of stock, material, and tools, and the DPW provided access to compost sites and dispose of, uh, to dispose of all the brush that was cut and removed. So if you take a look at Pace Road, a uh, really good project and looks great. And, uh, if the board doesn't mind, would you like to send a letter to Alex thanking him for his uh, service? Or did anybody have it on there? Members, well, comment, we bring him in. We, well, he's. It's, it's, okay, we'll, we'll wait then. You can. You can speak no, 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 no. His birthday is actually was actually Monday, and he completed his project on Saturday. <laughs> so he just made it to get his eagle because Mark was down. He was serving slush most of the day on Founders Day, and then he was down there, and they worked really, really late to finish it up. So I'm really proud of Alex. And yeah, I did have it on members' motions. He's been working really hard. He's been a Boy Scout since he was six years old, and I watched him grow up to be a very wise and smart young man, and I'm, I'm very proud of him, and, and Troop 62. So Great. I'm bringing him in for citation, Tim. We could, yeah. absolutely. Wendy, can you contact Alex and ask him to come in for a citation? Now, do you want to wait <coughs> until he actually gets his medal, his Eagle Medal? When's that, Deb? Well, he has to go through. It has to, yeah, he has his right up. He has to go for board review, and then they'll have a big presentation, and then we can bring him in after that. Okay. So we okay. probably should wait until okay. he actually yeah. gets his Eagle. We'll do that. Okay, Great. We can just and, uh, send, send him a letter anyhow, Wendy, thank it for his hard work on, on uh, Hamilton Street. And, and just a, uh, I guess a comment, with the, as everybody uh, I know attended, uh, the Founders Day was Saturday and that was a, a huge hit, um, really a great event. And uh, we owe a lot to you know, Donna Gould that uh, started that and, and founded that back, uh, I think, 34 years ago. Um, so and there was a lot of people that put a lot of time in putting that together and I just want to thank them. Uh, particularly the you know DPW building maintenance the police um, everybody that uh, really put the time in the custodians um, as well as all the volunteers that uh, make that happen um, youth and rec with Greg Nicholas and, and Crystal Kokunas it's um, you know it's a lot of work and um, people come and enjoy it but there's a lot of stress and, and work that goes into it and, and those people uh, in the town employees and the volunteers deserve a lot of credit for that so, um, you know, I'm sure you'll all have something to say about it, but uh, it's, it's one of the great events, and I think probably looking at coming up soon, we'll be planning for the uh, Christmas tree lighting, which uh, we plan to be bigger and better this year than uh, last year, and I think last year was tremendous um, because of all the hard work and, and dedication of volunteers. So, and that's all I have this evening, Mr. Okay. Uh, Mr. Before we get on to members' comment period, it is the taxi cab company here. Oh. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. I, ju I just had the uh, historical appointments. I'm sorry. Oh, I think you have them up there. Yeah. Sorry. Are you going to bring them in for interviews, or are you okay just voting? No, oh, okay. I thought they were. Okay. Okay. <coughs> so, would you like us today to make motions? Yeah, do you want to read them, Mr. Chairman, or you would you like? Yeah. To why don't you make okay. your recommendations individually, and we vote on them. By okay. Your roll call. Vote. Um, the, the first uh, appointment is a reappointment to the Historic Commission to uh, Melita Davis. Um, and uh, second is Steve Rich to the Historic Commission. Okay, do I have a motion for Melita Davis, 20 so Street? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Mike McCastanetti makes a motion to reappoint, to confirm the appointment of um, Melita Davis, 20 Birch Street, seconded by the Chair. Wendy, roll call vote, please. Castanetti? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mitchell? Yes. Netta? Yes. Mr. Yes, the ayes have a five to zero. And do I have a motion for Mr. Rich? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Select McPanetta makes a motion to confirm the appointment of Stephen Rich, 85 Main Street, to the Historical Commission, seconded by the Chair. Wendy, roll call vote, please. Mr. Castanetti? Yes. Mr. Horlick? Yes. Ms. Mitchell? Yes. Ms. Panetta? Yes. Yes, the ayes have a five to zero. Mr. Chairman, just uh, two other items that um, just came to mind is the, an update. Um, regarding the uh, CHOM program, uh, the CHOM site uh, in Bristol Street Park. The CHOM site, we're in the process now of uh, just getting the, the re-permitting re the, the, um, from DEP up there, which they're assisting us to, because of uh, using that area uh, different than, um, you know, you need a site change 
uh, on the permit and we don't there doesn't seem to be an issue but that's where we're in the process now and we have some the planning and putting together as far as purchasing um, on, as far as the Bristow Street um, and the charm program for people that don't know that that's the, would be a, a center for hard to recycle material um, batteries and whatnot that would have open to the thing and that would actually be the first charm um, center in Massachusetts so uh, the DEP as well mm -hmm. as us are pretty excited about that uh, Bristol Street Park, um, we were um, gracious enough, uh, Audie and Dwyer have uh, volunteered uh, and they're doing a survey down there for us to be able to put some plans together um, and they're working with uh, CDM that's volunteered their services with their landscape architects to put the pl uh, plans together, the layout. You know, and it's a little bit more, and I've talked about this before, uh, publicly and not publicly, but there's a little bit more, you think, oh, you just do a park, but there's sort of when, where the sun sets and where the angles of the trees, and there's a little bit more to it than you actually realize, and um, so that, that that's uh, moving forward, and we will be putting that together uh, once we get the, the uh, plans. Um, and it's interesting, I'm probably going to... Uh, uh, share with you guys in the next few weeks, but uh, when I pulled the plans at the at the D, uh, DPW just to see what was up there for any s survey plans for the Bristol Street Park, pulled the plan out that actually had a whole park layout there with a watering pool and croquet and I mean it was it's a beautiful layout of the of the actual thing there what's there now as far as the the layout and um, it's just unbelievable and then I looked down and looked at the date it was 1935. And I just said, you know, they, they, in 35, I mean, we really need to start thinking and having more <laughs> foresight in, in sort of quality of life issues for the town of Saugus. That 1935, they, I mean, it, it's an amazing layout, and I'll probably send it to the newspaper and they can run a story on it. But uh, you, you, if you get a chance to come in the office to take a look at it, it's, uh, I had it reduced because it was on a big plan into a, a, a eight and a half by 11. But um, it's unbelievable the, the, what they had for a park in 1935. You know, it had a watering pool and walking areas and swing sets and the, the whole, I mean, you know, it would be a beautiful park if we did that now. <laughs> so, um, but uh, very interesting. But that's all I have. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, Can I ask the town manager one quick sure. question? Sure. Can we please have an update on the Munis system? Sure. Um, actually, we're. Uh, um, in the process with the infrastructure that uh, we're connecting with Melrose and that should be completed within the next couple of weeks. Um, they're running a line Comcast and you know it, it seems like you have to wait getting a waiting queue for them to do that. Um, we did have some unfortunate and that's why I'm glad I can't wait to get into the Melrose infrastructure because we had a uh, I don't know if some of you are aware but we had a server go down one of our 10 or 12 year old servers that uh, does email and access to the thing. That went down for about three or four days and uh, our IT guy was working around the clock um, just because you can't get parts and it's just an antiquated system, you know, as far as the, the, the infrastructure there. So we're moving forward with that and we're doing some uh, um, infrastructure improvements within our building itself um, to be able to help uh, some of the connections in the MUNIS system. Um, we're, we're moving forward, I think our target date um, as far as implementing the financials will be f in um, July of next year, July 1st, for the financials. And then payroll would probably be somewhere in October. And, uh, we're, you know, we're having regular meetings now uh, with all departments and who's affected. And we have a, a strategic plan put in place that's, uh, you know, imp implementing. And, and so that's moving forward. But, you know, as you know, from an accounting standpoint and um, doing a conversion and all that it's it's quite extensive it's and that's just bringing those modules and once we get those up and running and those work then this is you know a two three four five year project in the sense of you know they have modules for permitting with uh, you know say you know with the inspectional services they can go out and use a tablet and everybody knows and you don't have to run upstairs to make sure that you paid all your taxes and then come down so it's it's there's, there's a lot of different modules whether it's billing uh, you know, stuff for the assessor's office. So we'll implement, obviously, the financials first, general ledger and, and whatnot, and then move on to payroll and then start bringing some of the other modules as we implement and train. So, but that it's pretty exciting because, I mean, it's, you know, I mean, you can't explain it. People don't understand. You can't run reports on, you know, we have, we, it's very labor intensive to pull anything into a, a Excel sheet and then try to analyze it from a financial management standpoint to make decisions. So. Thank you. Okay. Um, sorry, any board members have any questions for the manager? No. Okay. Uh, well, I, I have a couple, but I was going to do them, do my members' motions. Okay. That's okay. Great. You can do that. Uh, the 
cab company, Mets Cab. Is anybody here? Do I have a motion to continue this to the uh, September 24th meeting? Um, Mr. Chairman, I'll make the motion to take it off the table for us because we okay, table. Selectman so Horlick makes a motion to take it from the table. Second by the chair. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Ice have a five to zero. Selectman Castaneda makes a motion to continue it to the 20, September 24th. Second by the chair. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Ice have a five to zero. Okay, now we're going to members' motions. Uh, so, me members' comment period. Selectman Horlick. Um, I, I had asked our clerk to give us an update on the program that the town was involved in regarding the replacements of the sidewalks around the schools, and she did get back to us here. And it's a program, Mass Rides, for the school funding for the, uh, for the program. This started back in 2010. And we did finally get an update on it. And it's, it seems to be, Wendy, it's still in the progress of that they're, they're still trying to see, see what they can do for us to try to get these sidewalks replaced. The, 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 we're actually um, in 2015. It will, yep. th they'll start the work. And okay. Mr. Salvo, as I noted there, who was our liaison with um, uh, Jimmy Waugh, from yep. DPW will be setting up a meeting with DOT so that everyone um, can get up to speed on the program. It does take a long time to process in engineering, and that's why we're in the pipeline for a 2015 budget. Yeah, because the original program, it said it started in 2000. In August of 2005, the federal transportation legislation uh, allocated federal funds over a five-year period for safe routes to schools initiative nationwide. And I know we jumped on board in 2010 uh, because that was at the end of the five years. And so hopefully then uh, by 2015, uh, we can see some, some major improvement in town because this will save everybody some serious money, the taxpayers, because we're going to get these sidewalks done. And then uh, also there's been a lot of issues with people uh, with their kids going to school and complaining about there's a lot of sidewalks that are broken up or other areas that sidewalks are almost non-existent because we, the town has been trying to keep up with this and we have a lot of areas that just haven't had any maintenance done in, in a long time so that's fy 15 not yeah. the year okay thank you okay. anything else uh did you want to comment on that Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the board. The sidewalk committee met in this room last night at 6 o'clock, and uh, this topic came up, and the 2015 date is the accurate uh, time period that has been presented to us. Uh, and I want to inform you that what the sidewalk committee voted last night, and we're going to go forward with, and the town manager has been uh, working with us too, is that We've identified uh, three major roads in Saugus to have uh, updated sidewalks with granite and concrete, the granite curb and concrete sidewalk panels, and that's Lincoln Avenue, Central Street, and Main Street. Uh, Main Street from Saugus Center to uh, Bob's store. Um, Lincoln Avenue, what's, what's left in between the work that's being done now, uh, which would go from uh, actually end of, well, Central Street all the way down to Ballard and then Central Street all the way down to Saga Center, both sides. So in, priori in setting the priority, we decided that um, Lincoln at Central Street, we're gonna hold off because of this grant, uh, but we're gonna go ahead with Lincoln Avenue from Endicott to Bristow, um, and we have an allocation of 18% of the Chapter 90 money, which is $114,200 approximately, and that's going to buy us about 1,750 feet of granite curb and concrete sidewalk. Um, obviously, as the manager puts together the capital plan, um, we, we're going to have to piggyback into that because the allocation of 18%, it would take 12 and a half years to do those three major roads just using 18%. So the, the sidewalk committee is, is um, on board with the capital improvement plan and putting forth a, a listing, which we will have as part of that, but um, we, we're going to start the engineering work um, on Lincoln Avenue. So we are staying away from the Safe Schools grant areas uh, with the understanding that a part of that radius will do Central Street, which would be a savings. Uh, in the meantime, the managers have asked us to come up with an emergency list 
and uh, Jimmy Ward just dropped off two cans of fluorescent paint to my house today, so I'll be going out this weekend to identify the panels that all the members of the sidewalk committee actually came up with a list. We broke up the streets in town, so there's some emergency panels up by the Radigan House, up by Saugus Commons, there's um, in front of the Meg Building, and uh, throughout town there's some things that need to be done right away, and the manager wants to get that done. So we're going to use our allocation to um, build new sidewalks, uh, wait for the Safe Schools Grant for Central Street and adjacent areas, and have um, these emergency panels done. So it's uh, timely that you, you bring this up and it will dovetail nicely with uh, the, the work of the side. And I, I do want to thank the sidewalk committee. They've been very diligent with their uh, attendance and, and their work products. So uh, thank you. Well, Mr. Manugi, and I think once that was formed, I know years ago, 10, 15 years ago, there was always issues. People were talking about that Adams Ave. They were trying to look at putting sidewalks on one side. And there was money that was allocated at one time, I believe, and then, then it didn't happen. And there was issues up in other areas of town also, too. But once the sidewalk committee was formed, then at least there's somebody from every single precinct in town. And now everybody can see, you know, that instead of a couple of people trying to look at the issue, you have all 10 town meeting members, everybody from every precinct can go out in their precinct and they can actually see streets that they probably didn't even know had issues with the sidewalks. Because well, as you know, so it's been a good group for the last well, I years. agree, and Kathy Forbes from the Handicap Commission has been involved, and, and Joe Adubato has been participating, and so has and Jimmy Waugh and Rick Salvo. But uh, yeah, our first goal was to come into compliance with the American for Disabilities Act, and the handicap ramps, uh, certainly, uh, that, that project is substantially 95% complete on that so uh, and we do need one uh, mike at the uh, bike trail over here on central street there should be a ramp put there but but that'll be all on the list and uh, you know it's 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 great timing for the capital improvement plan that's coming our way and, and uh, we'll have that in there but ultimately this work will have to be done with some sort of a bond or debt exclusion because it, 12 and a half years to do this work, assuming everything stays the same price-wise, is absolutely, it's, it's, it's unacceptable, and these sidewalks are bad now. So thank you very much thank for bringing you. it up. Mr. Chairman, just, uh, to, just to add to that, well, I mean, I think one of the things that, um, as you know, what, what you guys have helped um, support and in, in, in the initiatives and, and we've worked together on is trying to come up with master plans whether it's the, the water pipes, the, the sewer that we're on an ACO, sort of mimicking that, uh, street repaving, um, and I think in the, the sidewalk, and what I've asked the, the committee to do is to put a master plan together so that at least we know w w what's needed and what's in a priority uh, form list, and then that way we can look at what we can do and what can be incorporated into an overall master plan, for, you know, a, a, a capital improvement for the town. I mean, you know, that would include playgrounds and athletic fields and buildings and mechanicals, so. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Selectman Hall. Oh, okay. Uh, also, too, um, it's the manager. I know last time we, we had discussed this uh, last week, and we were going to get an update on the on Eustace Street from the building inspector about the groundwater and the flooding and the elevation down there. So can we have that for the next meeting when you get a chance to uh, have, us, have him uh, give us an update on that? Also, too, I know we discussed this uh, also, too, that we were going to get a update on the Belt and Bly Bridge. I know they had that issue a couple of months ago to see if it's on schedule, what's going on with it, you know, if, if the project was I would delayed in any way or if they did figure out what the uh, issue was for the uh, structural uh, problem that they had with that. So could we have that for the next meeting also, too, Mr. Manager? Sure. Um, um, Hall, that, I mean, I can pull it out, but that was email email to the board, uh, I think, okay. shortly after you asked for it. Um, Robert I know, Wong. I read the email, but that was a while ago, but I don't know if, 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 if they're on schedule. It was like four weeks ago. Are they still on ago. schedule, though? As far as I know, that was only four weeks ago, yeah. the temporary bridge. Yeah. Yeah, okay. but that's the one that when they were moving it, the thing tweaked, and then they were going to correct the problem, and they did, but it, what, did that delay the project any, or is the project still on schedule? That's what... Oh, I think it's a multi-year project. It's yeah. not something that's happening in the, yeah, you know, okay. in the near right. future. But I thought they were right. supposed to act, uh, start using the bridge October 1st, yeah. I recall. Mm. Yeah, they were supposed to have it done by, by the end of this year to be, to be used. That's what I mean. I, I don't know what, what, the, what delay that caused, if that caused any type of delay, <clears throat> if it's going to be open this year or it's not going to be open until next year. That's why. Okay. And uh, also to... Um, also to um, um, Mr. Manager, I don't know if we can get a hold of uh, 
if you can get a hold of Comcast, I brought this up in the past. We receive a bulletin every so many months where Comcast does all of these things in other communities. They help with projects within the schools. They help the elderly. They help uh, bring personnel into the town in order to do uh, any, any type of maintenance or any type of uh, painting that buildings need or, or, or make donations. And, and I brought this up in the past, but we get all these flyers of what Comcast is doing in these other communities. So could you contact Comcast and see if there's some way that maybe there might be something that you might have a list of something we, we can need in town that we could get, actually get Comcast to come in with their volunteers to help us out? Sure. Okay. And the other thing that I have here too is that I got uh, some calls from some residents this weekend regarding with National Grid and there's been a lot of these solar panels put up in, in town and I was wondering, uh, Mr. Manager, if you could contact National Grid and see maybe in, in the future if they were going to do a survey in town to see where the most likelihood would be to put these solar panels up because because I think it would add value uh, to the community itself if people knew that, you know, as, as far as certain pieces of property in town were more susceptible to have solar panels that weren't. So I don't know if National Grid is just going to do what they're doing and just spotty put them in or if they're going to come into town and, and, and do some type of survey to say, well, this is what we looked at and this is the best part of town to be installing these, these solar panels on houses. So I don't know if you can contact them and find out if they have any plans for that for the future. Well, I guess well, I can look into it or have the building commissioner look into it. Because, but I, I don't believe it's National Grid. It's a, okay. These are private companies that go door to door and solicit to be able to put okay. um, solar panels up um, as far as on, on private residential property. And it, I think it's just you need a southern... Uh, yeah. view and they put them they'll put them up on any house as far as I understand there is a permit fee that's associated with it so it does generate some revenue for the town but as far as the town thing as you as you're aware because you guys voted we're in an exclusive agreement right now with a company that uh, tangent that is looked at all is looking at all the uh, facilities uh, within the town so that I'm not you know wouldn't be allowed to engage in any other company at this point to look at the town properties yeah. Hey, thank you. And I also want to thank everybody for Founders Day. Uh, we had a great day. There was, a, I would say, estimated at least probably close to two, 3,000 people showed up. Uh, we have everybody uh, came out, and Founders Day cannot happen unless the residents of the town came out. So I, I want to thank all the departments that were involved, the man and woman of the year, but mostly I want to thank all the residents that came out to Founders Day. And uh, every year we have seemed to have good weather. I think there was only a couple of times, but you couldn't ask for a better day Saturday. So I want to thank everybody involved and thank all the residents for making Founders Day another great hit this year. And that's all I have, Mr. Okay, Chairman. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda was my request. Uh, <clears throat> it did, did ask to be put on the agenda because uh, I wanted to talk about the RESCO noise issue down in East Sox over the last several years. And I'm going to ask the board if they'd support me sending some letters out. Uh, that, as you know, that plant was built in 1975. And up until about three or four years ago, the residents of East Sox has suffered uh, regarding the noise issue and every time their explanation is that a turbine has gone down and they're releasing the steam directly out out into the air but I mean it's it's really unbearable I couldn't even talk on my phone and I was sitting inside my house uh, I think we need to start need to send some letters out I, I'd like to send one out to our uh, to not only Resco but the DEP and uh, our state delegation I did call OSHA. OSHA said that it was not in their jurisdiction, but they were familiar with the plant. Uh, I did call the Department of Environmental Protection, and I did not receive a phone call, return phone call. So I would like to send some letters out if the board wants to give me the authority to send letters out regarding that issue. I know Select and Castaneda get some calls and drove down. I actually board. went down, Mr. Chairman. You know, <clears throat> we've heard the complaints over and over. Mm -hmm. But I have to tell you, until you experience what those people have to go through, I was, I was blown away. I mean, I get calls from Pevwell Drive, and I went down there as soon as I got the call, because I happened to be in Saugus, and I felt like I was standing on, the, on a runway at Logan Airport. I, I could not believe how loud that plant is that far away from the plant itself. It was just unacceptable for anybody that lives down in Precinct 10 or in the area of Resco. So I, I, I support that 
Yeah, would someone be willing to make a motion that they authorize me to send so someone? Moved, Mr. So moved, So Chairman. Selected Castaneda makes that as a motion, seconded by the Chair. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Ayes have a five to zero. Thank you. Uh, also, the Saugus Softball Little League 10 to 11 year old All Star team repeated their last year's success in defending the District 16 championship. In fact, they had 11 new players and only one, one player returned. So I'd like to invite them in for a citation, Wendy, and I'll, I'll give you the uh, information. Uh, next, Founders Day, of course. I want to thank everybody involved. They spent several hours walking around. It's always a great time, great food, entertainment. And I want to thank everybody who was involved in putting that together. Uh, Next, the Agana Special Olympics. It's a one-day event that uh, it will be held this Saturday, September 14th, from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the World Series Park. And I encourage everybody to uh, try to attend this Saturday. This is the eighth year, and uh, over the last seven years, they've raised $120,000 for uh, special, through Special Olympics, which will benefit the Saugus. Uh, school system, the special needs program. So I really want to encourage everybody to go. And I also want to thank Steve Aganis, who do donated his uh, trucks the last week and a half to uh, complete the rail trail section from Central Street to uh, Boston Street Cafe, Lincoln Ave. Steve's always there when you need him, and I want to thank him for that. Uh, I did send a letter out last week regarding the bus, bus shelter on Walnut Street. The board members should have received a copy. Uh, I, I sent it to the appropriate authorities, and let's see what happens. Hopefully, we can get a bus shelter for them. Uh, transit riders. Finally, the Belmonte Middle School. I wanted, we're going to have a rededication this Thursday at 9 a.m. And I hope uh, anybody who's around can attend. And we will have a tour for the general public this Saturday from 10 a.m. to noontime. Uh, I encourage everybody to go take a tour of the school. Uh, we had the opportunity, the building committee, to take a tour uh, about a week and a half ago. And it's amazing the uh, job that they did in that school. I think the money that the uh, town spent was well worth it. And, uh, I know we were reimbursed 50% uh, from the MSBA, the state. So it's well worth the money. It's, it's like a new school you're walking into. So I encourage everybody to go this Saturday, 10 a.m. to noon time. And that's all I have, Selectman Panetta. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We'll down the line. <clears throat> First of all, I just wanted to mention that many Sargonians have been impacted by the change in the FEMA, what determines flood risk. And I wanted everyone to know that FEMA is planning on having a meeting on Tuesday, October 1st in Lynn. And although this date is not set in stone, they, they tell us to pencil it in and we'll know more very shortly. The meeting will either be held between 3 and 8 or 4 and 8, depending on how many communities participate. And once we have a date, I would like the town manager to please send out a reverse 911 to everyone who's been impacted by this. And just so you know, I got the information from Colleen Bailey, very helpful. She is a flood hazard mapping coordinator and she works for the Massachusetts DCR Flood Hazard Management Program. The way the meeting is gonna be scheduled is that FEMA and representatives of the state will have paper maps as well as their computers so you can look at the PDF maps online if you need to. And they're gonna help each resident locate their homes and properties on the maps. And they'll be there to answer questions that anybody might have. That'll go on till around 7 o'clock. And then at 7 o'clock, FEMA representatives will talk for about an hour. They're going to talk about the maps and how they have changed, why they've changed, discussion on an appeal period, discussion about letters of map amendments, and a discussion about insurance. And if you come a little bit late, there will be representatives standing in the back to answer your questions. And they invite all communities to come. And if you want to record the presentation, you can. You can have your local cable station come and record the event so we can play it on our local TV station, as I'm looking at somebody who is on the board. And because there'll be so many communities involved, FEMA's planning on bringing in a good number of staff, usually between 10 and 12. 
So when I get more information, I'll make sure to pass it on to our town manager who makes sure that all residents are informed of this important information. Uh, the Break Hot Fall Festival, which is always a good time, will be held on Saturday, September tw 28th. And on this date, from noon to two, SAVE is again presenting Birds of Prey. Last year they did the OWL presentation. was really, it was an excellent presentation. This is going to be a live presentation, again, Birds of Prey. And it's going to be held at the Visitor Center. It's a free event. It's an educational and interesting event, and I would ask for all of you to go, because it is going to be great. And I also wanted to mention that um, I have received a few complaints regarding the traffic on Summer Street, we're right across from the Blessed Sacrament, and you know where Taylor Street meets Summer Street, right where the church is, and people are having trouble walking across the street because of the traffic going by. Considering this, I would ask if the town manager could please ask our traffic safety officer to look into the situation. And Mr. Chairman, maybe we could put this on the agenda for our next meeting. Thank you. Okay. Are there any crosswalks over there, Selectman Panetta? There, there is, but they s seem to be ignoring the crosswalks, so hey, it's, Sergeant, it's, it's yeah, problematic. Well, Sergeant, can you look into that for us? I'd appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, barrels. Cliftondale Square has barrels that, especially in front of One Stop Market, they're always overflowing every time I go by there, except on Monday morning at 7.15, I saw somebody actually emptying the barrel. And I, was, I, I thought we were in some sort of agreement with JRM that they were going to be picking that up more it, often. It, they're supposed to be picking up uh, daily, mm -hmm. um, every day, uh, for Saga Center, Cliftondale, and uh, Fisherman's, uh, Lobsterman's Landing. So, um, and then the other thing that, and I'll follow up on it, is that um, our, our recycling coordinator and, and DPW director, um, I had already sort of lined up with uh, JRM as well as uh, Wheeler Breda to donate some barrels that would go along the rail trail, uh, also including to put um, additional barrels in Cliftondale and Saga Center. Um, and those are supposed to be picked up daily, so I'll, I'll follow up on that if that's what you yeah, Because when we went to the bike to the sea table on Founders Day, that was one of the main complaints, that there were no barrels. So that's, that's really good news. And there was also a question when I went to the table, and I'll, I'll ask... Chairman Serino, regarding Essex Street and the markings on Essex Street, there seems to be some concern regarding that. Oh, for the rail trail? Yes. Yeah, we're supposed to hopefully get some signage up uh, on Essex and School Street. It's really needed there. I know Bike to the Sea paid for the uh, material, the, 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 the steel signs, and we just need the DPW to make them up. Uh, not, not only there, uh, yeah, it was the Essex and School that needs to be done, and Eustace Street also. Mr. Thank Mr. you. Manager. The 9-11 ceremony is tomorrow at the fire station at 840, and that is over at a public safety building. And we have another ceremony at 6 o'clock in front of Town Hall, which is being sponsored by the Boys and Girls Club. It's called the Remembrance Ceremony, and they're calling it the first annual Saugus Boy Scouts, Saugus Cub Scouts, Saugus Girl Scouts. So we have a ceremony at 8.40 in the morning at the Public Safety Building, and then another one at 6 o'clock p.m. It's Saugus Town Hall on our front lawn. The Town of Saugus, in coordination with the Northeast Massachusetts Mosquito Control, will be target spraying in the Riverside Cemetery area and breakout area to include Route 129 west of Walnut Street to Wakefield and Walnut Street north to the Linfield border. And this service is going to be conducted on Thursday, September 12th, after sunset weather permitting. And if you're not going to the FEMA event, the library is having an event, the Native American Settlement of Saugus. And this is Tuesday, October 1st at 6.30 at the Saugus Public Library. It's being presented by our Saugus Historical Commission. It's an overview of the Native American presence in the Saugus area dating back to its prehistoric and historic past as told through artifacts recovered in archaeological digs and previous records. And lastly, I just want to also reiterate what everyone else has said about Founders Day. It really was a wonderful day. Everyone had a great time. 
The food was terrific. I want to thank the Youth and Rec Center, Town Hall employees, the Founders Day Committee, and everybody else who was involved. It really was a wonderful time. I think this was probably one of the best years ever at Founders Day. There were so many people there, and it was just a great time. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, just thank to you. add to that, um, I'd be um, um, at fault if I didn't mention that uh, Susan uh, in my office um, is uh, instrumental in dealing with uh, coordination and doing uh, whatever it has to do with, with town hall and any of the functions. So I want to thank her. Um, she's really sort of overwhelmed and, and uh, quite busy, but um, does a good job at uh, coordinating things. And, and uh, I just think that she's a, a huge asset. And Can always count on Susan. Yes, that's <laughs> correct. Okay. Uh, is that it? Thank you. Mr. Lechman Castaneda. Thank you, Mr. <clears throat> Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, at our last meeting, we had a discussion regarding the Elm Street Bridge, and we talked about a public hearing. I'm not sure. Was there a resolution to that, whether we, when we were going to have one? No, we're waiting for some dates from CDM, Mr. Manager. Okay, is that what it is? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm hoping that um, I actually just sent them another email just as a reminder today, because you and I, the Chairman and I had uh, a conversation, and, and Susan, um, just to follow up to see what dates are available, hopefully maybe within like next week. Okay, good. Um, that we can have I've, a had a, I've had a lot of phone calls. In fact, I had two more tonight just before the meeting. Mm -hmm. Plus Founders Day, I probably had four or five people talk to me about it. And there's some strong feelings in both directions. So I, mm -hmm. it's certainly, I think, an evolution that we need to Yeah, any day next to have. week, uh, 730, Mr. Manager, at night time. <clears throat> um, I also want to echo the comments on Founders Day. It was a great day. It was a long day for some of us, and it was a hot day in that sun, but it was a beautiful day. Uh, a lot of folks came out, and uh, from the Veterans Council, I want to say thank you to everybody that supported the Veterans Council. The money that we raise goes right back into the parades that we do for the community every year, so thank you very much. Um, I also want to congratulate Marge Berkowitz and Steve Carlson, who were selected as this year's Woman of the Year and Man of the Year. Uh, two folks, I think that a lot of people didn't realize how much They've actually contributed to this town, and it was certainly nice to see the recognition being spent on folks that really deserve it. So congratulations to Marge and Steve. Selectman Panetta mentioned tomorrow, it was 12 years ago, that we were attacked in New York City, Washington, D.C., and Pennsylvania. Hard to believe it was that long ago, but it was 12 years ago. We lost over 3,000 folks. And tomorrow morning at 8.40 at the Public Safety Building, I'd ask all of us that can make it, please come out and remember what happened 12 years ago. It can happen again tomorrow without any warning. In light of all the things going on in the Middle East right now, we are not out of the dark yet. So let's pay attention to what's going on. But please come out tomorrow and remember what happened at, on 9-11. And again, tomorrow night at 6 with the scouts, as you mentioned earlier. I think that's going to be a little different twist on 9-11, and I'm sure that it'll be an interesting time, so please come out and remember then as well. Um, September 20th is National POW MIA Day, and at 7 p.m. at the library across the street, we will be holding the POW MIA ceremony, which is quite a moving ceremony. Uh, it's open to the public. I know there's not a lot of room there. We're expecting a pretty good crowd. Please come out and remember the thousands and thousands of American servicemen and women who are still missing from all wars. Um, let's see. Sergeant Van Steensburg, I mentioned to you a little bit ago regarding um, the parking on Great Woods Road. When you come into Great Woods Road, I don't know if you're aware of it or not, but I've had several complaints. The first house on the left actually is a Walnut Street address, but the parking is on Great Woods Road. And there's always four, five, or six cars, there's construction vehicles, and they park on that curve and makes it very difficult for people meeting at that spot. So if you can take a look at that and maybe have a suggestion for us at the next meeting, I'd appreciate that. Thank you. And the last thing I have is um, someone mentioned to me the other day, Mr. Chairman, regarding the bike trail about trash, uh, construction debris actually being dumped on just inside of Adams Ave, heading towards Saugus Center. It oh, yeah, like fence. A yeah. yeah, fences I, I just, have been dumped in there. I, just, I received uh, a couple phone calls, and 
they didn't give me the actual direction or a position of where it was done, but uh, I just received one tonight. I'm okay, going to okay. take a look. Right. We'll probably have to, I don't know whose jurisdiction that would be, Mr. Major, Board of Health or Building Board Inspector? Board of Health. Board of Health, okay. <clears throat> yeah, it seems like they put up a new fence and put the old fence. That's what I heard. In the, in the uh, right of way of the, the rail trail. They wanted to save on uh, dumping costs, I believe. But okay, I'll take a look at that. All right. Okay. And that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Thank you. Selectman Mitchell. Well, I did have lots to say, but because I'm last, you guys did it all for me. You'll be first next time. I'm writing it down. <laughs> that's okay. I like it this way. Um, just, I have to repeat what everyone said. Founders Day was amazing. It was a huge success. And a lot of people don't realize what goes into Founders Day. It takes a lot a lot of hours, countless hours, to prepare. And I know Donna Gould did it for a long time by herself with help from her friend Kathy, but she did it for a long time, and it's a lot of work, and kudos goes out to everyone who participated. Um, the businesses who donated um, their time, their food, to um, raise money for all the sports teams and the schools, DPW, the police, the fire, I could go on for days. The youth in Rack, Greg Nicholas, um, Crystal, Kunis, who worked countless hours, phone call after phone call, day after day, the town manager for everything that is, he's done to let it go through. It's just a lot of work. And if I forgot someone, I apologize, but anyone who participated that day, um, it was an amazing day. And let's see. You know, I just wanted to ask a question. Um, the, the rail trail, who maintains that? Who keeps that clean? Yeah, we, so far we've been getting volunteers. Okay. Bike to the Sea, the Boy Scouts. Okay. But like the manager said earlier, we're going to have to uh, well, I have budget, a budget or uh, do a doctor you know, site program. Uh, well, I have a suggestion. Day. We always have, I don't know if this can work, but we always have students who need community service, mm -hmm. uh, high school students to graduate, and they're always looking for things to do. And I, I didn't know if it was something that we could involve them in because uh, they're always looking for hours, especially in the spring when it's time to graduate. Yeah. And this grabbing for um, hours. Um, I, th I think actually, um, just to add to that, that I'm, I've had some discussions, preliminary discussions with the police, and they're looking at, you know, possibly some sort of a vehicle that would, uh, you know, a four wheel or whatnot that, that would give them better access down there when needed. And it's like anything, I think that the idea is that this is an investment, and, you know, we're going to have to have maintenance and you know, looking to, to, to continue to have the, the improve the trail itself. And it's a work in progress because it's brand new, but we'll look into all those options. Um, let's see. Uh, we have our first leaf disposal is not till October 21st because I've had a few calls. Um, we have October 21st, November 18th, and December 2nd. But the, um, the yard's still open until the, the first snow, right? Is the summer over? I'm sorry. I'm the, summer? the summer's already over. Well, I have many leaves in front of my Let's house. Talk about already. leaves already, but yeah. Yeah. Well, I have many. Well, people are calling me and asking me. So October 21st is the first pickup. And I think last is somewhere in November. We December 2nd. Yeah, December. November 18th and December 2nd. And then Friday night is uh, our football has a night game, 7 p.m. at Stagpole, under the lights. Everyone should go and support their team. That's all I have. Okay. Uh, okay, next citizen's comment period is Saugus concerned citizens regarding the SCTS operations and bylaw. Is someone here? Hi, how are you? <clears throat> how you doing? For the record, the name is Jean Decaro, 388 Central Street in Sargas. Mr. Chairman, the first question I have is directed to you, and please feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> but a few meetings back, <clears throat> I heard you say that you had an attorney look at the agreement with Comcast, and that attorney told the people here that 
the money from Comcast was a gift and you could spend it any way you wanted. I would like to point out to you, sir, that back on October 10th, 2006, the town of Saugus issued a license to Comcast for 10 years. It runs until October 9th, 2016. In that agreement, there is a statement. Any PEG access funding made directly to the issuing authority shall be placed by the issuing authority in a restricted account for PEG access purposes in the nature of grant account and not in the general fund, which account should be under the control of the issuing authority. Now, if that is correct, I fail to understand how an attorney can tell you that that is a gift and you can use it any way you see fit. That is a specific <clears throat> agreement between the town of Saugus and Comcast in writing. And unless you have issued a change order in the license and had a meeting related thereto, the money must be kept in a strict account and cannot be used. Number one. All meetings, according to your monthly meeting bylaws, all meetings shall, not may, but shall or will take place at the SCTS facility located at 1 Pierce Drive in Saugus. That's your bylaws. That's the bylaws of the Saugus Cable. That's the bylaws the Board of Selectmen approved. That is not happening. And you, as the authority in approval, should look into that, please. Any agenda <coughs> must be available to the public at least 72 hours, excluding Saturday and Sunday prior to any scheduled meetings. The meeting date must be placed on SCTS, Community Bulletin Board, website, and in the town hall. I am not sure that that also is being adhered to. On the budget, the last check that the town of Saugus received in August 9th of 2012, just prior to the board making up a new budget, was for $94,872. That was the new increase that went into effect at that time giving the town 3.5% instead of 3.25. It went up. However, the budget approved by this board is the same budget exactly that they use 
the 2012. That budget accounts for $360,000, which is approximately $20,000 short of what the anticipated revenue is. And it says that in the budget that the anticipated revenue is 360. Well, the numbers just don't jive. And I feel that this board should really look into that and find out why it doesn't apply. Yeah, uh, do you want me to answer now? Pepin? Do you want me to answer the uh, questions? Well, you may answer, sure. Are you, are you all done? No, no. I'll but give, I'm willing to listen. No, I'll give you another minute to wrap up, and uh, we do have a three-minute timeline, and then I'll answer your questions for you. Okay, that would be fine. I'm sure that you could do that. Employees, all revenues for the operation of SCTS are derived from the cable system Comcast subscribers and not town funds. Therefore, all CTS employees will not be considered town employees. No employee contract shall be negotiated or awarded. Under contracts, the Board of Directors may not enter into any vendor contract, leases, etc. Negotiations that bind the town without the express approval of the Board of Selectmen by a majority vote at a scheduled public hearing. According to the information I have received, the Board did in fact hire an attorney. And that attorney helped them go through whatever they had to go through in the discipline and dismissal of the manager of that at the time. Now, I may not be an attorney, but whether it's in writing or verbal, if you hire somebody and you're paying them, that's a contract. And the board did not come before this board, to my knowledge, have a public hearing and get approval at that public hearing, which is breaking their own bylaws, your bylaws that you approved. Can you wrap it up in 30 seconds, Gene? Well, I'm sure you're really other pushing people out it, here sir. Like to speak, and then I can answer your questions. The Board of Selectors shall maintain records of all work, including all of the meetings and financial dealings, and such records should be open and available <coughs> for public inspection. I'm almost done, sir. Try to be patient. I have been patient all evening. Not happy, but patient. Policy changes. Any changes in this policy herein must be done at a regular scheduled meeting of the Board of Selectmen and by a majority vote. Copies of written changes, additions, must be provided to each selectman within five days of the selectman schedule meeting. 
and discussion of the policy changes additions must be listed on the agenda and the correspondence. Yard Nichols, sir. Because I do not believe that the cable board is following their own bylaws, and that is a direct responsibility of the Board of Selectmen because the Board of Selectmen are the ones that approve it. The Board of Selectmen are the ones to make the change. The Board of Selectmen are the ones that say yes or no. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to answer your questions, and then we'll have someone else come up. Okay. Regarding the money in a separate account, the money is in a separate account uh, for cable access, and I know you did mention a gift. Uh, that I believe the attorney mentioned a gift is is the money regarding the the subject of whether town, whether employees were town employees, and and I believe. He, his opinion was that they're not town employees because the Comcast money can be seen as a gift, not town money. So that's, that's one. It, the money is in a separate account. There's about $480,000 in that account. The meeting location, uh, I believe they moved it to the police station because the uh, high school was not handicap accessible, and they have an a elevator in the police station. I believe that's why that was moved. The I'm, I'm, 70, not, I'm not saying I'm it not wasn't. Through, I'm not through. The 72 hours, uh, I believe, was a mistake. It should, it should be 48 hours. They're abiding by the open meeting law. The, the budget by SCTS on August 9, 2012, the $360,000 was based on an uh, average uh, four-year payment of $90,000. Employee contracts, I don't have any clue what you're talking about. Employee dismissal, I can't comment on, on uh, Mr. Garabedian's dismissal since uh, he did hire an attorney. Records should be public inspection. They should be uh, inspected by the public any time that the public wants to. So if there's a problem, I will talk to the board, the SCTS board. Mandatory policy changes, I, I don't think any were approved by this board. And regarding the rules and procedures, the Board of Selectmen do not have any uh, authority over the rules and procedures. I believe the uh, SCTS rules and procedures, I believe we had a meeting last October and uh, the board voted five to zero to not get involved in the SCTS rules and procedures regarding training and all that and uh, we gave the SCTS board that authority. But that's not addressing the issue. Well, I, I, the issue, the issue wait, is sir, very I, clear. Just said, I, I addressed breaking, your question. They're breaking their own need, bylaws. We need to move on. I gave you like five minutes when, when the guidelines three, I answered your question and no, you didn't I have a lot of people questions. here that want to speak. You made statements. I'm sorry, sir, I mean, they're I'm, not true. I'm, you're going to have to sit down, please. I, I'd like to hear from other people. I gave you five minutes. Um, I answered you your You have question. other people on you the might, agenda. You, you I, might, didn't, you I might, didn't see other people you might on not the agenda. Like, you might not like how I answered your questions, but I answered your questions to the best of my ability, and I like to hear from other people. Well, I suggest that you really look into it because you're not doing your job. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chairman, we don't have anybody else on the agenda. Is, does anybody in the audience want to speak? Okay, we get, Mrs. Uh, Fail, let Mrs. Fail come on up. Miss, I'm sorry. Oh. Good evening. My name is Stephanie Fine from you? 32 Bayview <clears throat> Road, Saugus, Massachusetts. Um, I'm here speaking in line with what Jean was saying. Um, you guys keep trying to absolve responsibility of the fact that you do oversee this board of directors. You do, by de facto uh, power of overseeing those directors, you're the ones that have the final say over their decisions. If we have a problem with their decisions, we have to come to you, okay? We are coming to you again and again. We want the cable station back in the hands of 
the people of Saugus and out of the hands of our Board of Selectmen. We hope that you will, go, will work with us on this. Um, clearly you voted against it with the majority again and again, so we're here trying. Um, and Jean has a very good point. By taking money that was destined for the PEG access station and using it um, according to your discretion as a gift, then that is in violation of the contract that mandates it needs to be spent on PEG access. If your complaint is that PEG is, access is not spending the money well enough or that they don't need all of the money or that there's extra money sitting around, well then that is time for you as a community leader to call some sort of community meeting to get input from the community what programs they would like to see funded. Okay, that's a way to reach out. If there's extra money sitting around, well that's a chance to fund some programs in the school systems that involve the public television and giving young people media skills. So, um, Please keep um, your mind open on this. We know you voted on it before, but it is something that we would like to see uh, not forgotten, and it's something that we hope we can change. So thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, next, anybody else? Just on the uh, comment, I know people keep saying that the Board of Selectmen control the SCTS board, but that's the farthest from the truth. And I'll give you an example of the Library Board of Trustees. The, this board appoints all the Library Board of Trustees. And I think if you ask anyone on the Library Board of Trustees, they'll tell you we, so I, I don't tell them what to do. So I, I don't believe that we have the final say in SCTS either. And if you want uh, that extra money, capital money, to be used for other purposes, I would suggest that you bring some suggestions up to the SCTS uh, Board of Directors. Uh, that, and see what they have to say first. Okay. Anybody else have any comments? Uh, Mrs. Salinas here regarding FEMA. Mrs. Salinas, if, if not, do we have a motion to adjourn then? So I'll move, Mr. Chairman. Selectman Castanetti makes a motion to adjourn, seconded by the chair. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Aye. Stay nice. Have a five to zero. Good night, everybody.